leg. Can you hear me, Eric? You're good, brother. How can you hear me now? That was a good one. Nice. Good evening, good everybody. Evening. I always say that. That's like my opening line. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. In that everybody. weird smirk. <laughs> I wipe that weird smirk off your face. Monster mm. bass man. We got a good one tonight. A really mm. good show. You know mm. why it's a good Aren't show? Aren't they all good, man, though? Really? Yes, but this one's special because this is the first real live in the history of Smallmouth Crush, meaning that it was actually thought out of, thought, thought, you know, about our intern who we still don't have the proper nickname. We'll just yeah, call that's him right. Alex. Axel contest time. Name. I think I'm going to launch a contest. Has been a great help. And we have a schedule. We have bumpers. We have intros. We have commercials, which I know you guys love. Amazing guests. And quite a following, guys. I want to give a shout out to everybody watching us so far tonight. All 130. Climbing. Climbing by the second. Guggen Slayer. David Brown. Ray. Epic. Oh, that's you. Typing away in the comments, as always. That's what I do, brother. Man, you got to engage with the peoples, man. Juice Newton. Does he know his nickname is Juice? Juice. Of course. That's his what nickname. Kind of noise? Was that you? Yeah. What, you want to take that call? Yeah, sure. I'd like to. Yeah, hold on for a second, everybody. Yo, bro. I'm, I'm streaming right now, man. Can I call you back? All right, brother. Big brother, I love you, man. Peace. Sean's in the house as expected. What? I don't think there's a live he has missed. Man, he is the man, man. I sent a package off to Sean. Most everybody's packages and some that had the shaky jig worms has been shipped from the auction. I'm tying up the shaky jig worms. That's the fire crawl bunch right there. Ooh. Listen, I'm before we get into every that. Night. I have to talk about that auction. What a crazy, crazy night, guys. We went almost six hours. For those that missed the ending, I'm going to have a little clip on my Instagram here in the next couple of days. <laughs> Involved basically taking a rod and breaking it over my knee because I was oh, so fired up. Boil it. You were egged on. People oh, were asking right. you to burn a jersey. We started really cracking on the rod, and you just said, you know what? That's it. I've had it. They wanted me to start a fire, basically, in my uh, studio. Yeah. And you pissed on the pissy fun rod. Pissed right on it. I did. So all packages were shipped out on Monday, and I use a program that Z Bates actually recommended. Was It's called Pirate Ship, which allows me to print labels and do everything right here. I matey. In my underwear. I don't have to do nothing. I only have to go to the post office, dude. Yeah, that, that, that's TMI, man. We don't need to know that part. I got that. I cannot wipe that image out of my uh, mind, listen, bro. Listen, I do you vacuum underwear. like that? I don't dude? wear underwear, okay? It's even worse, dude. So, hey, you asked. So you said it. The packages were placed on my doorstep Monday morning. Lady pulls up in the van. I knew it was going to be heavy 70, 80 pounds. So I'm waiting. I'm listening. Here she comes walking up the drive. And I go, hey, I jumped, but you kind of scared her. I go, you need some help with that? So I grab the big bin, bring it to the van. And she starts asking some weird questions, like looking at her sheet of paper and the numbers aren't adding up. I'm like, she's like, oh, I got this. Okay, well, I checked yesterday and today, and they have not been scanned yet. So, but I do want to say, they're still backed up from the holidays. You guys are going to get your stuff. Let me know in the comments if any of my shit arrived yet. It should have, but it, it it's either they just either it arrived or they just really didn't scan it yet. And I got to march down to the post office tomorrow and uh, have a conversation with the guy. So we'll find out. 
No worries. I'm not worried. Don't get worried. It just might be a little later than expected. Anything else on the auction? It sounded like a bunch of complaining Fun to time. me. The good, news awesome, is, man. the good news is I don't have too much left to ever sell again. So there might not be another auction until 2020. What year is this? I don't even know. 2022. Exactly. <laughs> so with, with the new year comes a new structured schedule on our live. And so we do want to keep things moving right along here. Let's post to that, everybody, that Travis actually one year later put a put a show schedule together. Congratulations. You're a real business today. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. We just you're, see a comment. You're uh, running it like a business. Steve Hardy gives a shout out. Loves the uh, the latest Smallmouth Crush podcast. The Scott Do Dobson was on, and uh, we had an unbelievable podcast. Listen, I am about 20-ish, 22, 23 top anglers from across the country interviews in, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, really excited to be able to share that with you guys on a weekly basis. We changed things up. Uh, Tuesday mornings was, was when the podcast was going to be released. That doesn't work too well for me because of the, uh, YouTube algorithms. I launched that Scott Dobson video at 7 AM and it did not take off because you guys don't want to watch fishing videos apparently at 7 AM on a, on Tuesday morning. And so what happens is if you don't get views that first hour, two, three, YouTube goes, well, we're not going to recommend that in people's recommended feeds. And so it doesn't take off as well as I'd like. So I saw the numbers not climbing like I would like. And I decided that we're going to move that to Sunday evenings. Sunday afternoons is when that will be released. Just so we can get some traction with that. Fair enough? Fair enough. Every first live of the month, we're going to do a monster bass tackle review. So I'm going to bring out the monster bass right behind me. It's not going to take long. But after tonight... Starting March, February, what comes after January? Starting the first week in, in March, no, February. I'm all screwed up. Eric, save me here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I'm working on the comments. This is your part of the show, right, bro. Keep doing that. Do you need help? By the way, Alex is here <laughs> in spirit behind the scenes. And so he's doing a great job with us as well. But but no, what I was saying, okay, the owner of Monster Bass will be joining us from here on out for that monthly review. So that's pretty cool. Rick from Monster Bass will be with us. Every episode, we're going to do The Real Shot, which is the premier tackle store in Northeast Wisconsin. It's a place where I really, really hope that a lot of my viewers purchase their tackle because it helps the show greatly. And it shows The Real Shot that this stuff is working and they like working with smallmouth crush so it's a win-win for everything everybody because they have some great products so we're going to do a tackle review one bait every week as well that we think are pretty cool baits some baits that we haven't even used yet but we're going to talk about applications where we would use them and get excited about it right eric yeah i'm stoked after we get done with all this tonight which isn't really going to take long by nine o'clock we're going to be bringing on derek from beast coast listen if you're gonna name a tackle company yeah what would you name it east coast. east coast yeah it's the best i mean like uh well you know if i was gonna name a tackle company i'd probably name it epic eric's bass lab bro well maybe i'm just yeah. saying it's a kick -ass name no, they east have kick -ass baits, and we have a really super secret announcement that we're gonna announce later on in this live that i think you guys are gonna get really really excited about and i have a feeling that he might just drop a dare say it coupon code maybe mm. for the viewers give them a little mm. discount perhaps perhaps so, so uh in so on the intern name i just saw a really good one come across the screen i gotta bring it up man okay go ahead a rod because it's a fishing stream a rod a rod and real <laughs> i like it but i don't because i don't follow sports and i hear a rod and uh I cringe, dude, at sport-affiliated acronyms. That's what the baseball guys say when they watch your shit. They fucking think fishermen are fairies. Get a real sport, bro. I mean, honestly, 
dude. I'm just saying, <laughs> being honest. With I'm just you. saying that football player that stole your girlfriend in Wisconsin knows you're a fairy. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So don't be don't be cringing. Don't bring don't, that up, dude. I'm sorry. You know, you throw shade, but it's got a, it's coming right back, man. Don't anger them, boys. They're way bigger than you are and stronger. Mm. Mm. They would snap your pipe cleaner legs in a minute. And then we have a special guest later on this evening. How about they, that? They're going to be coming on for the uh, small mouth crush after hours. And I promise you guys do not want to miss that. Like, like this could not get any better tonight <laughs> for the viewers here. So if you could like thumbs up, I don't know how the algorithm works, but like, like, like guys, stop typing comments and start liking, please. And share it. I don't know. Here's what you do. If you could. Yeah. You got to share it. You right click on this video and you copy the link and then go spread it on your Facebook or whatever. Please, let's get an epic crowd in here because I promise you, we're going to have some good stuff going on. Uh, yeah, for sure. So now I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I was distracted because now we have. We have some guests that are online right now with us, but you just can't see them. But we have a little private chat. And so one of the guests decided it'd be cute to start chatting about things that don't matter and distract <laughs> me from the live stream. <laughs> okay, ah! yeah, if it's crucial, like, hey, you got a, a, a booger hanging out your nose, Travis. I appreciate a private chat like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you enabled it. It's well, going to bite you in the... I can't see two at once. Is there a way to, to do a multi-screen? Well, here's the thing. You're talking, and you're trying to run the show. You're trying to look at the comments, and you're looking at the private chat. Just keep the show going. You're the host. And let the rest focus, bro. Don't try to multitask right now. I won't. Let's get into it, guys. It is almost time. Or you could just read the comments in the chat, and I'll take over the show. You decide. That might be the. That might be the way to go. You mean that's what usually happens? Mm -hmm. I ain't doing that tonight. Come on, man. Stay stay focused. Let's go. <sighs> Let's, do it. Let's do it. Let's get in the, the, the next part of the live. The Monster Bass. Whoa. 77 Preview. likes, brother. 77 oh. likes already. That's big. The first of the month means on Small Mouth Crush Live, we're going to take a look at the Monster Bass box for the month. Check out all the cool baits that are inside. Break them down. Find out some of the different applications where we would throw these baits and our recommendations. I got a box right here. Let's let's dig into it. Well, why don't we dig into it? So here we go, guys. The Monster Bass is a subscription box full of a lot of great tackle that you can catch fish right out of the box. I'm going to open this up. I haven't even looked at it yet. So... Let's Whoa. break it down. Well, now heck, neither neither have I. Well, let me explain, okay, <laughs> because this is kind of new. I promise you, in February, when Rick comes on with us for the 15 minutes, you're going to be hooked up with a box, okay? I got one shipped to your house, Brohim. Unbelievable. Okay. And there's, there's going to be a June bug crankbait in every one for... That would be pretty cool. So that the first might... bait out of the box, you know what? I heard a lot of good things about this. The Big Bite Baits BFE. All right, take one out. I'm going to. I already, I, I already, I, I'm, a, I'm familiar with this plastic. Okay, okay, you know somebody that flips that. Who? I do, Matt. That BTL, is, Matt. It, it's their favorite flipping bait. It Matt, is. Matt and, and, and I don't want to, I want to keep rolling here because we got a lot of stuff to get to. But the, 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 what's great about this bait is it's so compact. It's got a little extra uh, tentacle there, and it's going to slip through that vegetation really easy, which is important when you're flipping. Flipping and punching. Then we got a Lunker Hunt. So I'm not familiar with Lunker Hunt. I am with their topwater, but they have a jerk bait that came out. A kick-ass perch pattern jerk bait. Deep diving. Okay, so that's going to be a great bait. We also have a Vicious. Look at that chrome. If the sun's shining, you better be throwing that color. Mm. Jerk bait as well. And then we have some little Ned Super K jig. Little Ned rig in there. Little Ned rig action. We got the fan of the week. This guy, he puts on he, he, whatever. And then we got all this other stuff. Okay, little brochure. And then rabid baits. Look at that. Little marabou. Dude, these things, if you look at them in the, in the aquarium, if you want to get finesse, that is the deal. And here's something really interesting, dude. 
This saber toad. Okay, I lied. I looked at the box earlier. This saber toad, dude. I got. I go. I want to bring out the package, even though you guys know I hate taking baits out of the package. But this frog. <laughs> I kind of got after you. <laughs> Legit frog. Legit frog that came in the box and excite stick baits, right? Stick ah. baits. So listen, it's a cool Nico, that's, that's a good box, it's... man. Because listen, yeah, because there's time. I mean, time out. That hits the top of the water column mm. almost all the way to the bottom with the stick bait. It does. Or if you have a little plastic, you can throw in that super K. So it is a cool th concept because there's baits in here that I never would have purchased, right? Honestly, I there's a lot of good flipping baits. I probably never would have bought these, but now I have them. I'm going to try them, and guess what? If I catch a fish or two on them, guess what? Yeah, I'm buying a bunch of these. Does that make sense? So it's kind of cool. Open up your mind. But we do got to get rolling on our next. I'm all fired up. Just calm down, man. Yeah, breathe, bro. I got this schedule in front of me, and I got <sighs> – <sighs> There's another red number on the private chat, Eric. Let it out, man. I'm done with that private chat. I'll turn that <laughs> private chat off right now. I'll oh, leave it, man. <sighs> Dude, go for it. What do you got? All right, let's get into the real shot tackle tip of the week, shall we? ライザーベイトですね。ものすごく飛距離出るんで、やっぱりこう突然ボイルとかってあるじゃないですか。で、そのボイルもあの近距離ならまあいろんなルアで届くんですけど、結構こう透明でボイルとかってあった時にこうな
Al oh my gosh, an owl wife for sure. I say ale wife. Do I pronounce it? I pronounce a lot of things wrong, so don't don't even correct me. Yeah, yeah. I want to say ale wife, and that's what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this little gem here, I see working for me because I'm a big smallmouth guy and I like clear water. So when you get those days where it's flat calm and those fish are feeding up still, high sun, high skies, this is going to be the bait of choice for me. And oh, it's a, for sure. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not like a retrieve that you would think because there's a, depending on how you want to work that bait, sometimes that straight retrieve is ideal for this technique. Can you hold your bait up, Eric? I just, I need proof that you got one. Okay. There it is. Still in the box. Yeah. It's so pretty in that box. I think I'm just going to leave it in there like Travis. That's what I would do. Yeah, premium, hooks, premium hooks on this. This will, will definitely put some fish in the boat. No doubt. A sneaky little bait. And what's unique about it? Because there isn't a whole lot of other baits on the market like this, or a lot of guys are not throwing this particular style of a top water. Right. So when you, you know, when you, when you pick this up in, in areas that have a lot of pressure, you know, a lot of inland lakes, unfortunately, are just getting, like, destroyed by boats all the time and, and people fishing, you know, throwing their pop bars and their spooks and their wake baits or whatever the case may be. This little sneaky guy just might save the day. And I'm going to be doing a lot of experimenting with this uh, in the future. So super exciting little bait from the real shot. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this bait. Pressured fish, slick, calm conditions. Think about how a spy bait is super effective when it comes to those conditions. This is a little bit different for fleeing, especially with schooling fish. Um, yeah. You know, I and you saw how that guy in that in that video broke the surface because when bait fish are fleeing that's what they do mm -hmm. and i'm going to tell you if you've ever fished for school and fish they are hard to catch yeah and you're going to uh, need some very specialized t, t bathgate brought, brought up a uh, good point so this bait actually does sink and when you reel it, it rises quick and then correct walks it along correct and it kind of has this, it has this yeah. motion like, if you've ever seen the underwater videos on it, you guys can check it out. There's a bunch on YouTube about that bait. So mm -hmm. type in Jackal Riser and then go go to the real shot. If yeah, you're let interested. me know in the comments who's all excited about this bait. And let me know in the comments if you purchased some from the real shot. Because I want to give a shout out to you guys for helping support the channel. That's pretty freaking cool. Along the bottom there, you can see the code that I'm going to take off momentarily because I can't abuse that code. You know what I mean? Moshi Moshi. Konnichiwa. Don't I don't want to abuse the code. No, I'm all stuck, dude. That's why you don't take baits <laughs> out of the damn package. <laughs> Enough of this. Look at it. It's 8.53. We're ahead of schedule. Before we bring Beast Coast on, let's talk about our schedule, shall we? Yeah, man. I know we kind of grinded out a few things over the phone earlier today. Uh, I want to share with you guys our lineup for the rest of the month and talk about some 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 guests and what you can expect on the live stream for the rest of January. Yeah. So here we go. Next week, we're going to be talking with Ryan Salzman. Yes, the famous Ryan Salzman. It's been a while since he's been on the show. Can we expect fireworks on that show next week? Man, it depends on his attitude. And yours. Just don't make him mad. Mm. <laughs> What's the topic? Let's look. Alabama rigs. Oh, he's pretty He's pretty adept. You love an Alabama rig, I too. I do. Listen, I thought I knew everything about throwing an Alabama rig until I recently interviewed a guest on the Small Mouth Crush podcast. Okay. That's awesome. I, I don't even know. Pretty, pretty, pretty crazy takeaways. Different techniques, how to fish it, different yeah. rigs. If you don't um, listen to this podcast and you like to throw an A-rig, you're missing you, out. You, you cook, 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 crazy. That's not going to come out until about March, -ish, but I'm just letting you know. <sighs> Did we make up? Yeah, Ryan and I are tight. We're fine. Can, can you hold that bait up again and just let the camera get a close up of the bill? It is not a spy bait. There are no props on this bait. It has a metal bill. No, put it flat so people can see the bill. Okay, now I can see you're doing that. That's right. That's what that looks like. The picture on the real shot looks like it just has an arm coming out of it. But the picture is actually of that bill. So don't freak out if you go to the real shot and don't see a picture that looks like that. 
If you see Jackal Riser 007 in any color you like, that's the bait. Got it, guys? As I looked at the Real Shot website, Travis was a little freaked out that it was a different bait. It's not. It's that one. They just took a bad picture of it. I did freak out a little bit. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I just wanted to let people know because if they saw that and then they see the picture, they're going to go, what is that crazy metal arm coming out of the front? It's a metal bill. And that causes that bait to rise. And it does. It has this kind of an action. So hey, don't think quick, that it's just real, coming straight quick, through the water. Uh, David Brown has a uh, a good point. Now that we saw the bait, I, I do want to play that quick clip again of that Japanese dude talking in Japanese. Yep. But it was really cool seeing that action of the bait. So I want to do that real quick. But let's get through the show schedule. Uh, January 16th, special live Patreon for supporters only. And we have a bunch signed up already. I really appreciate that. helps keep this channel moving. Uh, that's a special side live epic eric and i will be doing for just those that sign up on my patreon if you need information on that you can go to the show notes down below here in the description click on that link and sign up it's ten dollars a month man ten lousy dollars puts a little jingle in my pocket keeps keeps everybody happy and uh we're gonna be dishing out the goods january 16th we're gonna be talking about finesse fishing secrets and i know eric's got a couple secrets he wants to share with you guys. I certainly am going to have a few things that I hold back on slightly. And we're going to share those with everyone who signs up for wait this. A minute, wait a minute. So wait, wait. Oh, this is your Patreon. You, you said you're going to hold, you you're going to share a few and I'm going to share all my finesse secrets. Okay. No, I think you're going to share all yours and I'll give them a few. Mm. So just on the, on the scale, I'll have less than Travis. He's going to have to dish. Yes. January 21st. Am I reading that right? <laughs> Epic Eric's team partner? Scooter. Captain Scooter Lily, man. You guys get Scooter to find Lily. out Listen, if you how got, we did it, man. He's on tonight. Yeah. CWW Inshore Charters is on tonight. That's if Captain anybody, Scooter, if anybody who's got a name like Scooter goes on anyone's show, live show, you got to watch it. I mean, hell's to the yeah. Does anyone else know a Scooter out there? That dude like, can flat out catch him. That's crazy, man. It's crazy how things came together every time we get on a boat together and tournament fish, man. I'm not saying we always win, but we are always in the hunt. And you how guys, does he do it? He's going to tell you a few things. Thanks, M. Jones. He bought a few of those from the real shot. Sweet. Um, Yeah, it's going to be a good show because I'm excited. You guys do really well. I, I'm not. Listen, I love Scooter. Okay, I've talked to him plenty of times on the phone. I've met him at the sports shows. We hung out. But he kind of, you know, a little jealous sometimes, man. Takes you are. He takes you away from me, man. Dude, man, are you getting all? Are you getting all emotional now? I'm just saying. Yeah, you need time. to put yourself on full screen. Are you getting misty? I thought. I thought. I thought we had a plan, Eric, to dominate the tournament <laughs> team. I'm stuck with the. I'm stuck with the lower level <laughs> anglers like BTC and you know people that. BTC is about lower level angle, man. He's BTC could catch him. January 28th. Speaking of BTC, we got Brian the Carpenter, Fat Cat Newton. Wow. I don't even know. I don't know what's going to happen that night. So. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. Mm -mm. That's going to be incredible. I mean, I, I will, I'm just going to sit back and probably watch that one. Yeah, I have no idea, man. Anything goes. In that show, for sure. Let me let me bring up that uh, let me bring up that bait. You know what? I already clicked it off. I suck. Really? I can bring it back. It's not that hard. Let me do that. Let me let me let me get up to that guy there. So check this out. There it is. First of all, that that tag end is way too long. Not if you're Gerald Swindle. Why is it that long? Because it doesn't matter. Ger Look, do you think if they're looking at a like a rising bait, they're matter, so but, focused but, on the listen, action? Listen, listen, listen. That, if that were true, why you're would they? Catch, you're gonna catch. You're gonna. You're gonna catch uh, algae and grass with that more often than not. It's not right. an algae and grass bait, dude. It's open water. All right, continue. I can't argue here. So there's <laughs> the man. Who is this guy, anyways? It's Where's a, he fishing? Lake Jim, Jim No, okay, no, so we, it's it's Sai so Yagasaki. So he casts his bitch out in his kayak, right? Yep. And watch this, watch how he retrieves this thing. 
No, that's not a kayak. It's one of them small Japanese boats. Oh. For reservoir fishing. There it is. Look at look at look at that thing like jumping, a, man. Yeah, man. Look at like a fucking a flea. sardine just skipping across the water, dude. Like a flea and minnow, man. It's, look at that. it's now listen. Yeah. Honestly, that that shot right there was for the commercial. There ain't no way you're gonna fish it that fast like that. You're gonna miss fish, Brohim. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe if you're around a school of white bass where there's three thousand white bass just golfing minnows on the surface. Did you say golfing? Yeah. <laughs> all right this is a this is the right retrieve listen click your bail and go to work there brohim oh <laughs> you know what whatever it doesn't matter we're right. at 901 right on freaking schedule dude jamie newton just said he canceled his order because you critiqued his tagging <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one jamie <laughs> Uh, so, so listen, Gr Grat84 brings up a great point. Yes, at Hartwell, you'll smash them really that fast. Sometimes you actually have to burn a bait to get a bite from a school. Okay, that was an extreme burn. I get going fast. I get walking a jerk bay wa or uh, wa walking. I'm off. Walking yeah, top water listen, super, just, super just, freaking fast. All right, just going. Leave, choo -choo 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 -choo. Yeah, you got to leave it alone. Part. But this Japanese dude over here, that was too crazy. Too crazy for me. I'm, you're not going to argue that with me. It's M. Jones time. says, how many spotted bass have you caught in your life? Uh, shit, dude. At it does least, bring up a go at ahead. least at least two. So either <laughs> so um, I think what, what M. Jones just said is that spots are crazy aggressive and to get their attention sometimes. You know, I'm gonna throw that bait on Gaston because there was a lot of schooling activity in the Bojangles championship that Scooter and I had, and we saw them schooling. And they ignored larger offerings uh, until we sized down. I was I was throwing a Super Spook Junior right out of the gate and caught a 377. Scooter got the initial bites, but they missed the bait. Uh, it, it didn't match the hatch. I can't – if I had that bait, Listen, I'm really chase, curious what that would, what, what that would have done. At they're going to chase this bait. Okay, my point is they're going to yeah. chase this bait. They're going to see it hopping. What, is that, what was that dude doing? You got a lot of people talking that they, they would love it that fast. This bitch, was, this thing was jumping two feet out of the water and then jumping in and then jumping out. Look at these small hooks. Yes, you're going to get a strike, but are you going to hook up? That's my point. All right. Stop hating you guys. All right. I'll hey, look, we'll, we'll just right do it now. all. You know what? All, screw on the, the water. Special guests, screw Beast Coast. Yeah. And and screw uh, the, ja the Jackal Riser. Is that how you want it to end? You're done. No, we're bringing him in. There he is. Ah. I didn't know that I snuck it in there like that. He's just shaking. What's his up, head. guys? What's He's up? Post in the house. Long day at the shop today. Man, he's still at the shop. I came in late knowing that I was going to shack up here and have a couple beers and nice. enjoy you guys tonight. So I'm cozy. That's the plan. We love it. So I, I love your baits, dude. I just made a video that we put up on the YouTube channel yesterday with the magic flick. And my buddy Tom Nee and I went out there and wrecked them on it. And to be honest with you, dude, that was the first time I used your bait and super impressed with them. Kind of kicking myself in the butt because that little sneaky deals, uh, it's like a hybrid crosstail. Can I say that? Yeah, you can. Actually, I think I saw somebody, um, well, I mean, I'm pretty open about it. Like it's, it's kind of a mix between a crosstail shad shad shaped worm and it's got some ribs on it just just for feel so yeah it's kind of like three or four different baits all just blended into one but yeah it's an awesome drop shot bait and uh i'm glad you finally threw them dude got I off know. The kick or whatever it is I you did. Throw. i throw a lot of different baits man i'm always experimenting um it, it, it's a real unique nice soft plastic like, like, it's soft but it's durable it's got a lot of action uh, listen I don't even know where to start. I'm super excited. You got a bunch of different tackle that we have to go through tonight. Take your time. We have all night. There's no time limit here. But I want you to, real quick, if you could, just talk a little bit about your background and the the company itself. Yeah. And then let's get into the let's get into the baits, man. Yeah, man. So first of all, is there any place where I can see like comments or or, or what folks are saying? You know what yeah, I mean? So if you look in your right oh, hand you screen, something back to say I can reply. <laughs> do you see that little comment button up there? Comments. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There okay. You, go. you click that, you can see what everybody's saying. 
I got it. Okay, cool. Nice cool. guys. Hey, I'm gonna do a sound check real quick. People said I was getting static. So um, how does my voice sound right now? Please let me know in the comments. There below. is some there is some static, but this isn't a professionally uh produced live stream by any means. We're stuck with the equipment that we have. I mean, all you can do is shake the cord a couple times, and if that works, it works. Otherwise, we got to deal with it, guys. I'm super, super sorry, uh, hmm. but that's the way it is. Okay, I shook my cord. How'd that sound? Didn't work. <laughs> shook my cord. Um. <laughs> oh, crackling. I'm gonna go to my computer mic. Let me see how that works. I'll change that's mics. A bad idea. Uh, you're, you're gonna sound like Derek once you do that. All right, you guys want me to talk baits or what? I, I want to talk about your background and the and the Do company it. and yeah. So I worked. Uh, I I actually worked for a big corporation for, you know, I think like most <laughs> people, I just just went into it and did it. And I just I always fishing was always like my thing that I always had that I loved more than anything. And after working twelve hour days for you know my boss's benefit, and it just kind of occurred to me that I could you know I could. It sounds super naive, but like I always had products in my mind. And, and so I just decided one day that I was going to go for it. And that was, that was like four and a half years ago. And I remember I got, I got, you know, it was like my annual review and uh, I talked to my boss and my manager during my annual review and I, it was all positive and good, believe it or not. And, um, and I remember being like, this is, this is not doing it for me. So I remember like a week later, I just, uh, I just went full throttle and bootstrapped the thing with, you know, the, the one benefit of being employed by a big corporation is generally, you know, you, at least in my case, you make a lot more money than, than you do the first couple of years of a startup. So I just took it all and just went all in and, and uh, like four and a half, five years later, um, here we are and i um, working, working my butt off, but it's, it's so much more fun and so much more satisfying. You get to be around the stuff you love every day. And, and uh, yeah, so again, this sounds like super naive and, and and whatever like following your dream but but it definitely works sometimes if you have a, some semblance of a plan so man that's awesome i see in the yeah. comments we got we got a lot of beast coast fans chiming in huge oh, i see that now i like 84 84 meal bone it'd be weird to shake my cord while watching this <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes if you pay attention to those comments it pretty much will just take over your uh your soul yeah, it's fun this is awesome i gotta do this uh i gotta <laughs> do is. this top-notch fishing i met the beast coast crew at the new york show nice thanks man thank you pretty sure i've no, seen awesome. those jigs on instagram probably cool mm. heck yeah well, guys, uh, you know, not not to take Travis and Eric's show here, but like, if you have any questions, just I hate just speaking at people. So, <laughs> so we just will. Uh, we're we're going to uh, we're gonna Eric's gonna monitor the questions and respond. I thought that was the intern's job. We can't hear him. Because <laughs> talking, I want a bigger screen to showcase the baits. Oh, I'll do more than that. You can count so on. So, real quick, Patrick Pennington, does anyone cut down the weed guards? I think you're talking about our double wide weed guards on the uh, assault AP and the battle flip jigs. And yeah, you know, the, the you can cut down those weed guards because they're super hefty. That's that. Those, both of those jigs are braid jigs, but you can, um, you know, you can cut those down in half. You can cut just a couple fibers off, but the width of that weed guard is what makes them awesome, you know, around like real thick stuff like bushes and wood and, and stuff like that. But you can always cut them down if you want to fish it on fluoro or, or if you're just feeling like maybe you're around smaller fish and it's harder to get like a really good hook set. Um, but yeah, sorry. I'm looking at these comments are awesome. <laughs> we're all, M Jones. We're all the degenerative fishermen in bass fishing. <laughs> oh, this is great. It's this is crazy. so much fun. I'm definitely going to be uh, – look at all these good comments. I expect the people to be like, oh, you know, you should make this. This sucks. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, honestly, it's pretty funny. Like the guys that I have on pro – like, you know, pro staff, it's just – I don't like that term. But a lot of guys that I've, I've learned a lot from and I, I fish with that, you know, they help test the baits and fish the baits. They're the most critical people in the world. Like literally, it, what, that's the best way to be. I think half, that's half the reason – you know, the products turn out well is because, you know, somebody will see a 3D drawing and be like, ah, it's stupid. Or, you know, you should do this or change this. And, and, uh, here we do. 
Beast Coast is the Buffalo Man from the Capital Raid. <laughs> hey, here's a fun here's a fun fact. Yeah. Uh, apparently, apparently you grew up where I live in that area. Yeah, I'm from suburban Philadelphia, and you now live Crazy. in Manhattan. Actually, when I worked when I was working for the man, I uh -huh. lived I lived in Maniunk, Travis. I lived like three miles from you in the in the more fun part of town. <laughs> Right, and I right. met my wife the first night that me and my buddies moved into like our bachelor pad. First night. Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Isn't it? That was wow. Crazy. Wow, like, man. All right. I got a question for you, man. Coming from corporate America, I've worked in corporate America, man. I've always wanted to do a fishing thing, man. That's been my secret job, passion for years. How much capital did you have to start the business? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. And I think like I think if you want to do custom stuff, which work Beast Coast is tiny. Like, don't let me, you know, I've got one employee and like we contract a ton of stuff out. Sure. That's, that's fine. Yeah, like I think you need to be really aware of like where you want the thing to go. Like if you've got an sure. item or two and you're building molds, you can handle that probably with what you've got on hand. But if you're sure. if you want to build, you know, several product molds, especially if you're getting into soft plastic injection molds with bigger plates that aren't just little, you know, little four cavity molds, you know, if you're sure. building big molds or sets of molds for open pores, like, you know, you're well into the thousands. And, and sure. so it's a big risk. I mean, this industry, as you guys know, I mean, there's so much marketing and you've got a couple of pros that own 90% of the eyeballs. And if they put their name on it, that's that. But East coast is like the opposite approach. So, you know, started from like nothing with a couple of dudes that just like, you know, we're die hard and, and, you know, I like to think no, you know, know what we're doing kind of <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. and, yeah. and make good stuff and, and work with guys like you to, to kind of get the, the product and the, and the brand out there and have the conversation with customers. So right on, man. And I think that's sorely missing. In that's the a long answer, but <laughs> no, it's a great answer is, uh, you know, it's, if you want to build a business out of it, you need to plan to wrap up, you know, one, two, three, four, five figures pretty quickly and, mm -hmm. and plan for it in the future. But anyways, I, I'm talking sure. too much, my bad. No, not at all, man. What was your first Beast Coast lure that, you know, when you launched the brand, you had a logo, did you come to market with multiple lures? And yeah. Yeah, when, what, what, what was the date of your inception? Like, when did you hit the market, bro? So Jamie Newton, what were you? Sorry, I'm like, look, I'm totally sidetracked by these comments. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe people want to hear the shit that I have to say. It's great. Um, so Jamie, I was actually in a brand management team. I worked for um, I worked for a huge uh, a Fortune was a Fortune 500 company. They're taking product. Anyways, I was a brand manager, so I did like a lot of brand marketing and analytics, like a little product design, way Very too many cool. spreadsheets, like just you know, just like typical grind i mean it was fun you got to do a lot of cool stuff and and you know you were involved in product development and, and stuff like that but it was uh you know again it, every single day there was a point where i was like i could definitely do this for myself so that's so, so cool yeah yeah good that question was that was, that was, uh, hard to find. i have a terrible head for flat rims especially as i get older and my hairline like recedes i feel like real cheesy so i we haven't brought any flat rims in for a while i like it and I, I, I used to i did used to rollerblade oh these <laughs> <guys are crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> that's the oh, best listen, thing so, ever so, i so, did used to be an aggressive skater <laughs> i wouldn't call it aggressive i mean i bought some freaking rollerblades from target you know because back in the day in menominee park that's just what you did um moving forward here i do want to get into the baits but we are getting a lot of comments because I know you're a pretty good stick on Candlewood. That's and funny to say that. I'm only good there in the pre-spawn, like 80%. Oh, of the <laughs> oh wow. I got to come right out and say that. Like, I, you know, I have a couple of buddies that I fish with. Honestly, I've only been on Candlewood for two and a half or three years. I just moved to Connecticut and uh, with my mm -hmm. wife. And, you know, I met a couple of good people and they basically kind of showed me the way out of that lake and, and uh, you know, they know who they are. I'm surprised they're not on here like harassing me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, in the spring, in the spring, I can give you advice. <laughs> and in the summer, right. I can give you advice. I hate fishing in the winter. Like right now, guys are catching uh -huh. 20 and 23 pound bags. And I just, 
I just can't, wow. I just can't sit there and just, just dra- I just can't do it. But, but wow. anyway. All right, we got a bunch of baits, dude. We got Let's this talk. Bait, sorry, dude. swim bait. We got this drop shot bait. We got this, <laughs> I'm sorry. You call it, dude. I don't even know. Some big ass. I guess if you're a jig fisherman, you might throw that. I don't it's a know. big flipping bait, dude. You yeah, put it on the jig, yeah. Get out of here. All right, you, let's talk. What are you talking about, dude? You're on those Z Man Neds way too much. I like little baits and I cannot lie. Um, oh, good. That should be the next song, bro. Yeah. I like there's little a, baits and I cannot lie. There's anti social tackle box. That's because you're a hermit. <laughs> <So, laughs> this is one of my. my <laughs> That's Mike Stamp right there. All right, where are we starting, man? What, what bait are we starting with? Oh, yeah, man, sorry. A I'm hustler. Pushing, a hustler. Bring so the hustler. While we're talking right about bait. Actually, on, no, we're, we're talking about the hustler, Jake. The hustler, man. That's got a lot of buzz going around. I don't know if people can, can see this well, um, but this is uh, the hustler jig. So it's basically a little, if you can see, it's pretty pretty loaded with cool little features. But anyways, this is a, um, you know, it's kind of, we call it a hybrid finesse jig. It's It's got a big enough, it's got a mid-wire hook, and um, it's a 3.0 to 4.0 hook, depending on what size hustler jig, one quarter, five sixteenths, or three eighths. Um, and you can actually, you know, you can flip this jig. It's not a hair jig. I hate throwing hair jigs. I'm not good at it. But I know that marabou and hair, synthetic, whatever, it, it's great in clear water when the fish are actually like looking at the bait and not just reacting to it falling quick. So, you know, this, this kind of came about because, you know, here in the Northeast, we have all this clear water and, uh, you know, it's small mouth, Anthony, this dude seems awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm pretty average, but, but, uh, but yeah, so, um, that's a hustler jig. It's got marabou tied under a spider cut skirt. And a lot, all of our skirts, all of our skirts have, have uh, crystal flash tied in. So if you can see that, it's got a lot going on. And when the bait's just sitting at rest in the water, this marabou just kind of breathes. And then if you look, it's actually got a dual keeper that's got a molded lead barb as well as a, uh, a wire barb as well, um, in addition. So, and we're actually going to a screw lock on this jig just to be totally transparent. But for now, you know, it's a great keeper for, for pretty much many different baits. But the one thing a ton of guys are doing with this is throwing like a little, like a little Kytec or, or, or some other really small swim baits, like a 2.5 to 3.5. So we're going to a screw lock. Can you um, hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. I can hear you. I'm just saying, I, I if you look at the if you look at the camera, oh, that's, I, you got a little fish tank set up there. And it's extremely. Look at how that just stands straight up like that, and you can see that marabou. You get a little current down there, and that yeah, marabou. Yeah, exactly. All you got to do is basically touch it, and that marabou goes to work. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And you know, like natural materials, I always thought were. Like, I just think natural materials are like beautiful and, and, you know, like just incorporating some fly tying stuff. And we don't, we don't make these in house. Like the, the, like the first sample of every product is, is made in house or at least 3d drawn in house. And then there are manufacturers that, that, that actually make the product. And, um, but again, like there's just the idea of having marabou in there was, was important because again, just hair and cold water or, or clear water, it just, it just works. So, um, Excuse me. Uh, so rolling rocks are are, sit, are starting to settle in, um, but yeah, the hustler jig is, is is an awesome little bait right now. Somebody says it's a spot killer. We don't. I mean, I don't. I I don't fish for spotted bass, but the, we get emails all the time from people that say it's it's an awesome spotted bass bait. And actually, quite a few people, I guess, on those deep you know southern impoundments where you've got 60, 70, 80 foot of water or whatever. I don't think you're probably fishing there, but basically those lakes with spots in them, the clear deep lakes, a lot of people ask for a half ounce and we are coming out with a half ounce of this jig and probably like, I think April we'll have some inventory getting here, but for now we've got the quarter five sixteenths and three ace. And, uh, it's just, it's, it's just an awesome little jig. And again, it's got a heavy enough hook to where you can actually fish this on light flipping gear and you're not going to bend the hook out. And, right. uh, you know, we, we didn't use a two O because people are putting crawl style trailers on there and whatever else. So, um, listen, I, I want to talk about some jig trailers that you would recommend to use with this bait, but before we get there, guys, you know, the camera work here, 
doesn't do justice. This is a beautifully handcrafted jig. Like the eye in it. like you don't see this with <clears> other <throat> jigs out there. You just don't. Like it is it is a gorgeous work of art. And this Thanks, this, dude. this camera is not doing justice to that at all, dude. You got to hold one of these. This is Guys, can you see that It's crazy. Can you see that 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 crystal flash in there? Guys, there's nothing there's no material like that. So the blend. What was that? What am I hearing, dude? Whoa. Stream. <laughs> that was that was wild. What happened, Travis? Did you replay something? No, it could be a parallel universe. I mean, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I just had I just had a moment there. But anyway, um, put that back up because I wanna I wanna as a fly tire, I you know, I tied flies for 10 years, Derek. So I have a I, I think I've got a that, man. dude. I mean, the appreciation for the artistry here, it is a clean tie. Guys, I don't think you understand how hard it is to get that much good material on a hook in the right order, the way it's layered, the splay on the spider cut skirt is correct and proper. This is pretty sexy. Watch me pull this jig out of this package, how this thing just pops out to life. I hope it catches it because I just got like stoked when I, so this is the package. Here's a black and blue one, right? And let me just, let me open this up and watch how this marabou just like comes to life. This is very cool. Let me try to do it for the camera. Boom, did you see that? Look at that thing, man. The spring of the material, the way it's cut so that it, it splays out correctly giving it a lot of life and that crystal flash on that black and blue, just a hint of glitter, man, it's proper. It's proper. So as a fly tire, dude, you guys nailed it. So. All right. Listen in the comments here, I do want to talk about jig trailers, Derek with you that you would recommend with that jig. But I think, yeah, I'm going to ask you to do this first, dude, because we got guys that want to make a purchase here. Beastcoastfishing.com. <clears throat> Can we give them a promo code, man? Yeah, so just, you know, because Travis insists upon it. Um, we, no, I, I asked I'm, nice. this is cool. This is going great. I'm, I'm, I love all these comments. What's up, Phil? Um, oh, yeah, so basically, dude, I can get lost in these comments. I want to ask. <laughs> you could every that. night, bro. Trust so me. Anyways, so for 15% off, off, Travis said you guys like coupon codes. I get it. So for, our, um, for tonight – yeah, I guess we really should just do it for tonight. We'll do BC15. If you go to our site, peacecoatfishing.com, um, BC15, you can enter to check out, and uh, that'll grant you 15% off. We turned it live uh, on the site. so Dude, that's um, awesome. Yeah. So anyways, um, as far as trailers, that's a – and so so real quick, Eric, you were talking about getting those things tied up. Like, you know, imagine we went through quite a few iterations because it, they don't cut, you know – for those to be mass produced in the thousands, like you yeah. got to on top of it. And so like we actually go through a process where we get like videos sent to us from the factory to make sure that they're tying the stock right. And we yeah. get a video for every color <laughs> that we have on open purchase order because it, it like if you don't, it, that's a hard product to mass produce. And I'm not saying we mass produce it in a way that like, yeah. you know, Z-Man produces a million products. Like, but we make thousands of those things, and man, it was hard to get that right. So I know, can't even imagine, man. And I'm sure they're not all perfect. So I'm not saying that, but 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 for sure, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's been a it's been a challenge. Travis, yeah. go ahead, take over, man. Well, I first of all, I just want to get a lot of feedback as well on Instagram. If you guys want to send me your setup, what I mean by that is in your Instagram story, tag me. How you're watching this program right now? And I'm going to post it to my story as well. So that's always a fun thing to keep me Mark occupied. Kennedy, you guys, greatest sales you guys are blabbing along. <laughs> Mark Kennedy, I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not. I'm not trying to be a salesman, but but I, I'll take that as a uh, You're doing a great job. Listen, we got to talk Jake trailers with that Jake, bro. What yeah, yeah, so, so let me just get into it. So I know, so we're actually going to a screw lock on that jig, which I know is going to piss a lot of people off because a lot of people like the, 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 the jig as it is. But we're going to go to a screw lock because so many people are throwing it with with like a little Kytec or other brand of 2.5 to 3.5 inch swim bait. And, you know, the smaller finesse swim baits are generally really salty, really soft. And the reality is a screw lock holds that better than anything, especially if you're whipping it around. And, 
you know, you're catching fish on it, you'll get a lot of life out of the screw lock. I know on, you know, a super soft bait like a Kitek, you'll probably lose the tail first before you before you start having to glue or, or, or fix the trailer. But we're going to go to a screw lock on this jig in, in a couple months. But for now, you know, a lot of guys are throwing little swim baits like a Kitek. Uh, Net bait makes, you know, the pack of crawl. And they've got oh, yeah. this is in that. I think one's like a 1.9 inch size or a two inch size. That's a super popular trailer. Like a, you can put any chunk on the thing. That won't be too big. Um, but yeah, I would say, or like a chigger crawl. So like a chunk, a 2.5 inch kind of um, like crawl trailer. Um, like the Travis. Zoom, Zoom Ultra, Ultra Vibe would be fantastic, man. Oh my God. The Zoom little Ultra Vibe trailer, man. That would yeah, be dynamite yeah. on that. No, thing. honestly, you could probably put any trailer out that you'd throw on any other finesse jig. This one just happens 100%. to have hair and a little more detail on the on the head, and it's got a little more going on. But you can throw the same trailers. I just, you know, I just always personally I throw the little net bait, that little packet crawl, you know, or just a little tiny Kitek trailer. That's and mm -hmm. so. Many. Phil Breen, Baby Rage Crawl. There's another one. Any of the Ned style creature baits too, except, you know, pretty much any of the Ned style creature baits are great on that quarter ounce and five sixteenths ounce size. And then the three eighths ounce size, that's got like a four O midwire hook. So you can, you can flip with that. You can put like whatever you want on there really. Um, oh, Smaldy Beaver. Holy shit, man. Wow. Yeah, Travis throws that a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's got a smallie beaver in his pocket all the time. Dude, everybody is throwing some great oh, ideas for, oh, for Eric. The what do you mean by that comment? Crazy flapper. Wait, who's uh Ray? Oh, Ray Ray. What's up, man? I saw you on Instagram. Wait, so Kitech makes a 2.8 crazy flapper? Tiny. I gotta check into that. He knows I, I he works for I think he works for anyways. I gotta check into that. <laughs> <laughs> it works for the competition. That's all good, man. It is all good. There's plenty of room, Mike, for everyone. That's something I've learned, Eric. Like, if you make so true. unique stuff and you've got your own little brand and, and you respect right. your consumers or customers, whatever you want to call them, like, you know, let, let, you know, I don't want to make any big statements, but let the big brands do what they do. Like whatever. Right, right, right on, man. I mean, there's nothing like the hybrid hustle. Man, there there's isn't. nothing like the Marauder out there. There's nothing like uh, several of the jigs that you make out there. I mean, this is wholly unique. It stands alone. So that's good stuff, man. It's All right. So stuff, sorry, Tra you guys just shuffle me along when you. Yeah. Do. So I love, I love the jig concept. You got it. You guys got to pick that up. I mean, 15% off right now on his website, beastcoastfishing.com. You that's said one day only. Uh, if you're watching this tomorrow morning, hopefully. Beast Coast doesn't bring that, doesn't take that down just yet. No, we'll leave it up for like two days. Oh, wow. Nobody else, not in public code. So honestly, yeah. I don't, it doesn't matter. We can leave it up for a bit. Fair yeah, enough. baby, um, baby D bomb, man. I want to hear about, well, let, I've got, oh, oh, time Travis, off. you got something, bro? Go, I, dude, I, man, keep it flowing. I'm just getting excited here because I just want to make the statement. That jig was awesome, but there's a shit ton more coming. Okay. Awesome. And I want to keep it moving. We're on yeah. the same page. Eric, do you have anything else you want to talk about with the jig? And Derek, do you, or can we move on to the next bait? Oh, I was I was asking about the next bait before you interrupted me. You yeah, know, let's go. Ahead. <laughs> well, you tell me. By the way, everyone, I'm not like dying. Oh no, no, I wanted to do more jigs, dude. I didn't want to go to a whole other category. We're All right, we let's go to the flow. jigs. Let's go to the jigs. So, right, got so, our going. so we've got our. I'm just gonna go ahead. By the way, my face is getting beat red because I'm drinking beer here and. I just, I guess, for whatever reason today, my skin just doesn't like the beer. So don't worry about me. You're looking good, bro. So, Eric, I know you were talking about tungsten jigs and Beast Coast. Yeah. Um, these are, well, it's going to be impossible to see. But so we've got pretty much a full tungsten lineup. We actually got two new tungsten items coming out. One we're working with Travis on, actually. I'm sure he'll talk about that later. And uh, one's just an awesome kind of all purpose casting grass jig. But for now, um, here's two of our tungsten items. This is our Vanquish flipping jig. And uh, I think we've got our max feel, which is three quarter ounce. Here, I'll take it out of the package. Um, Why not? Tungsten jig. And so these are pure tungsten. Uh, there's, a, I think, a couple of companies that, you know, that do a really good job with tungsten these days. All of our skirts on our tungsten jigs. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, we can. You're good. So all of our skirts are tied with crystal flash. We're, we're going to add a couple non-crystal flash colors this spring. But for now, 
everything's got um, like five to nine crystal flash fibers tied in with the skirts, if you can see that. Um, yeah, yeah. So this is the Maxfield Dragon Jig. It's 97% uh, percent tungsten. And uh, here's our flipping jig. Let's see. So this is our Vanquish flipping jig. It's kind of got like a squared off arky head, so it, it uh, skips like really, really well. I love um, that. And so one thing we just did on our tungsten, we're about 90% through the transition is, so a lot of our tungsten jigs, they all have a powder coat, like there's a matte black powder coat. But we we're using, uh, you know, our what we call permamat. It's, it's an oxidized tungsten uh, base material. What that does is it turns the actual material black. So underneath the powder coat, and, you know, if you bust the, the, the paint off, which you inevitably will flipping or whatever, it's not going to be shiny uh, like like a lot of tungsten out there. Um, we'll have our permamat underneath. So it's like a matte gray and you won't even see when you chip off of, of the powder, when you chip the powder paint off. So Man, that's, that's a awesome. cool feature on these jigs. Uh, they've got this flipping jig's got a 4.0 ultra point. Um, they're tiny compared to lead. I think everybody or a lot of people know that, but tungsten's generally like, you know, pure tungsten is like 33.5% smaller than lead of the same weight class. So if you order three eighths ounce tungsten jig, you're going to notice it's tiny compared to your three eighths ounce uh, lead jigs. Um, so I think that's significant. If I could just jump in real quick on tungsten yeah, versus talk, lead. Man, you know, I, I'm totally stoked about that flipping jig being tungsten because as a river fisherman, you know, especially we talk about pre-spawn or jigs on rock. I think tungsten jigs outperform lead jigs on rock. Why? I think the sound is completely different. There's so many more lead jigs on the market than tungsten ones. Flipping for me on rock, I got rock wood mixed in sometimes on my rivers. I want to present a different bait to them. I want to stand out. So it's going to get me, I think, a little bit more vibration. It's going to transfer and tell me what I'm coming over. That tungsten is kind of like... You know what I mean? That transfer of feeling the cover, knowing where the jig is, what it's doing. If I hit a piece of hard structure, I feel it transfer through my rod and I can shake that on that cover, man, and draw the bite. It's going to sound different for sure. So I think that's yeah, going to stand sure. out. Well. Yeah, exactly. The, like the reason that tungsten is so much smaller than lead is because it's so much denser. And I'm sure a lot of the guys right. know this, but that's why it transmits better too, because of the density, which is, you know, the same thing that actually makes it smaller but you know with a three quarter ounce tungsten football jig especially you know depending on what, what line you're using you can feel everything you're dragging across which is really oh nice you know when you're on the right bottom um yep there there's a reason i think so many people specifically use tungsten football jigs but like you said if you're like the arky style tungsten flipping jig that we make the vanquish jig if you're flipping around you know rock and wood and stuff you're feeling yeah, yeah. all that you're feeling all uh, that Oh, oh yeah, man! It transfers with fluorocarbon. So yeah. Tungsten jigs right now, bass fishing full um, Z, bass fishing full Z. Uh, we're using uh, four. Well, in the flipping jigs, it's a four O Ultra Point, which is made by Mustad. It's a really good hook. You know, it's not a Yamakatsu, but it's a really good hook, in my opinion. We you great know, hook. Yeah, so um, I have zero problem with. You know, there's a lot of private label hooks, and there's a couple of name brand hooks that I really think are are not great, but Ultra Point is not one of them. I think that's a good hook for for a good workhorse jig. Lock Holmes, oh, what up, man? Agreed, man. It's comments. You know that guy. It's it's awesome, oh. isn't it, man? So yeah, um, top notch fishing. Nice. These comments are awesome. So, so, so Jamie me. Newton wants to see the uh, the the weed guard angle on the flipping jig. I'm gonna give you full screen. Okay, here I'm gonna like try and get you to see this. I'm hoping you can see that. But one thing we do too on these jigs is the weed guard's not four inches long. I always hated that on jigs. Like a lot of stock, you know, a lot of mass produced jigs, the weed guard literally comes to like the bend of the hook and it's just goofy and you gotta trim it. And and so so yeah, there's there's the angle. There's probably like I would say a quarter of an inch between the point and the guard. And the guard is, they're, they're, they're mid flex fibers, but there's only about 12 of them. So it's, it's just a good all purpose, like flipping jig. It's not a good heavy cover flipping jig, but if you're just like used to just kind of pitching an arky jig around docks or, or like, you know, whatever else you might flip, uh, you know, like wood, not like, not like gnarly tangled wood, but this is a good jig.
So there's that angle. And then the angles are pretty close on, on the football jig as well. If you guys can see that. Cool. Looks like you got, I want a beast coast named Philly, Philly. <laughs> Tom need you watch always sunny in Philadelphia. I actually used to watch that show all the time and I completely forgot Mac had a shirt that was, that said beast coast on it. So I got to bring the boys back. Uh, listen, I'm going to pull Eric up. What's he doing? Looking down at the screen. What no, no, I, I didn't know if anybody could hear me, man. Like, I, I, I it, hear you when it, I take you off the screen. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't know, bro. It said, it was, I, I, said I was backstage. I was talking. Could anybody hear me? I didn't know. Travis, real quick, I want to answer bass fishing full Z, any flat rubber. Right. So right now, we don't have any rubber, uh, flat or like traditional round. But in, I think, March, we've got inventory of three new colors. Uh Stealth Crawl, Stealth Pumpkin, and, and Stealth Midnight. And they're actually going to be like 75 strand blends of silicone and living rubber. So, and no flash. So they're going to be dynamite. Stealth. And, and uh, so yeah, keep your, keep your eye out for, for those best magic flick for candy, for candlewood. I mean, I always use the candy crush color because it looks like an ale life. Hey, Matthew. let's, let's talk mm. about that bait. When are we going to talk? Oh yeah. About so here's the magic flick. I know this is like, <laughs> this is all the baits of ours. Sir, you don't do out. this enough, bro. That's Here's not how you roll in. That's not how you roll in. Put that bait down. What do you want me to do? We're redoing this whole thing. Oh, <laughs> you didn't get the free show instructions on how to roll your product in? That's on manual. That's page seventy six of the manual that you should have received before. First of all, guys, I just oh, what's up, Paul? continue. Right, I'm right, joking. Right. Listen, yeah, maybe these baits, are, these baits are. If you guys like a crosstail shad. If you guys have bait fish, whether it be perch, whether it be uh, shad, whether it be even gobies, this bait's going to work. And Tom Nee, he's in the comments below. Him and I fished this bait last summer. Look at that, dude. That actually, in the video, I made a comment about that color. What do you call that one? Uh, this is bankroll. This has been like nice. a color from the beginning. It's like an iridescent green, iridescent purple with black flake. But Unreal. it looks like a smelt or... Like every bait fish has purple in it. Oh and yeah, I, you can't go wrong. It just works. Um, so, but yeah, the other cool thing about this bait is if you look at it, it's really hard to keep it still. It like wants to move, which actually is why it's a good bait. But you see how if you look at it from the top, it's got an hourglass shape. And the reason it's got this this kind of like real thin diameter section here is because when it's on a drop shot, like that section just wants to quiver and you know and flick. You know, that's that's hence the term magic flick. Um, so yeah, that's this is a magic flick. Um, actually, we got like I think like two or three phone calls in the past couple of days about people asking if they fish it upside down, like you would a crosstail shad, I guess, with the flat back. That's not really how the bait was designed, it was designed really to fish like that. Um, you know, basically nose hook it. I like to nose hook it on a little bit of an angle, so there's like even more like water displacement, or if there's any current. Or if you're moving it, it like catches more water. But yeah, this this bait's an awesome drop shot bait. And I think like, you know, with the whole Ned Rig craze, I would say like half the people buying these are probably using them as Ned Rig baits because the material is neutrally buoyant. And because of the way that, you know, it's designed with this break in the middle where it's real thin, it just wants to kind of like, you know, do it just wants to do just that. Oh, Travis, kind of put one in the tank, Travis. Can you do that right now? That would be huge. It's hard to see what it does in the tank because you guys know how subtle that quiver is. Ah, but yeah, doing true, it, true. I, true, I true, true. From Beast Coast, awesome. True, true. That'd be incredible on a Demiki rig, Alex. Alex, you are right. Double A, you're right. Double yeah, A. Actually, a. Alex, that's something that I don't honestly like. I don't. I don't fish that. I don't ever fish a Demiki rig. I just don't. But so many people. You know, whether it be through like Instagram or Facebook or email, like I know a lot of people cut the nose of that bait off and fish it as a Demiki root bait. Actually, I know Alex. There you go, Travis. You got the, yeah. you got it flicking. There you go. It works, man. Because look at that thing just kind of sits there like a goby on the bottom, and you give a little shake, and it just rises up off the bottom. That's exactly what gobies do. Yeah, sick, dude. I'm sorry, I'm getting freaked out because I. I, I told you you should have fished that bait sooner. <laughs> Listen, I have a couple places in mind where that bait's going to come into play. 
Come on, Cam. Well, I'm coming with you on one of those trips this spring or summer, I guess, is really when you start using that bait. But <laughs> Sean Lai, thanks, man. Beast Coast, top colors. So in the magic flick, by the way, can you guys hear me? Can somebody write in the comments if you can hear me? Because I just see myself. I don't see Travis or Eric. I gave you Good full man. Screen, dude. We got you, bro. I see you guys. We're with you, bro. We're with you, bro. Travis just creamed his thong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this shit is great. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, so a couple people have asked about top colors in the magic flick. Well, really – like if I can, I can give you top sellers because I, I have to know these things. They're Bankroll, The Chronic, Bankroll, The Chronic, Pro Smoke Special, and uh, and Bass Candy. The Chronic. But, I like the it. Chronic. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all have a past. <laughs> I heard you, bro. I feel you. Uh, Tales to the end. Travis. How did yeah, he is chronic in a lot of ways. Um, how did you come up with the name? I've seen that question like 20 times on this stream. You gotta answer it right now. What what Beast, Coast, Beast, Coast, Beast, Beast Coast. Coast? Well, because I'm here on the East Coast, and you know, like my I just wanted a strong brand name, and so wow. East Beast, and that's what we're that's all so crazy, doing. man. Trying to catch the, the big ones, the beasts, and dude, just, you're a brand manager. You're a brand manager. That's so crazy. What a great background to do this, and you're a fishing fool. I love it. Yeah, man. So, anyways, Travis looks bored. I don't know if he wants me to talk about the next big. I'm, I'm not bored. I was grabbing um, a color. Did we talk about bankroll? He, yeah, he just he named, yeah. Okay, where was I? Um, yeah, you weren't here when he named the top colors of the bait you're holding, dude. What? Travis is over there sexting. <laughs> dude, did you did Eric, you I didn't, I didn't did you smoke the chronic before you came on? He just talked about the top colors. Where the fuck were you? <laughs> I didn't. Derek, were you didn't you were in one of your conspiracy streams? Come on, man. Get in the game. Derek, I didn't. Doctor Dre, the chronic. I always think about that when we pack up that case that. Cartons of that color. But anyways, uh, yeah, purple rain's an awesome color, too. I have a very important question. Yeah. <laughs> I need you when you to, have to announce it, it's not important. Go ahead. I need you to go and sort through those little magic flicks and pull out that I'm going to call it a melon color. Can you can you show us that? I, I was reluctant to talk about it. Are you talking about the dirty deluxe color? It's got gold and black flake, and it's kind of like a dirty watermelon pumpkin. Or are you talking about? Mm. Can you show both of them, and I'll decide. You want me to? I gotta like walk out of this little oh, office for a minute and go into the shop. No, don't do that. All right. Well, then I There's can't. There's a do particular it. color that is a. Uh, yeah, bass candy is an awesome color. It's a dark melon, dude, and it's legit. Oh, did you, we talk about you, the perch color? You are. Yeah, that color is awesome. That color is. It, 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 What's it called? What's it called? It's called, it's it's called dirty it's dirty book. Book. Look, Jay, look. actually. Yeah. What? What, what? What's the perch color called? So people get the name if they're into the. It's, perch it's color. so. I think we're. I think it's like completely out of stock right now, unfortunately. But we'll have more okay. in my weeks. That it's a dirty perch. My buddy Jay, you know he. One of the, he doesn't use a ton of Beast Coast baits. He's he's a buddy of mine, and, and he's actually one of the guys that does a lot of promotional stuff. But he throws that heck out of the magic flick. Certain times of the year, and that that perch color, he he actually did some of the, you know, the, the Pantone or color references, whatever you want to call it. Did he really? Yeah, he helped me out with that. I like to do that. Like if I have a buddy that loves a bait and they're missing a color, that's I'll so just cool. like, I, like that's the fun. That's half the fun. Right? That's like, so cool, man. Like, why not? You know what I mean? Dude, like, I, I, I got ideas. That's so cool. I hate pretend. You know, it's like if you're a I big brand, it. you can put like any crappy color out there and just put a name on it and it will sell. But sure. like I rely on people that really know what they're doing and fish like five days a week. Oh, uh, yeah. Hold on. Like, yeah. What you got? I'm going to have to a bottle. I just, I just, I just, I just want to share this perch color. Oh. If you're fishing a body of water that has perch. Dirty this perch. Is, this is the damn color you need to be drop shotting with. Okay. That color is awesome. For sure. Now, that's my recommendation on the perch. If that is, that if if dark, if yeah. the morning, all the colors are good. That's not even like that. I know they're all good, but if you're looking for just one or two or three, you got to get this this uh pro smoke. Pro smoke special. Okay. You got to get that one. And now here's the bait of here's like if I could 
if I was an ambassador of this this magic flick and we had a smallmouth approved color, it would be this. And I this package That's I ran out of the packages. What is that? That's the truth. It's like an avocado melon with like a yes, like a clear base with a lot of silver flake. Okay, in it. this avocado, avoca I call it avocado. It's I'll called the truth. Call the truth. It's, it's called the truth, bro. Clear dominant, but it's All got right. a lot of silver. It's like basically a mix between like a shad and a baby bass. Look at that, though. Mm. You want a little sexy morning dawn? That's not really morning dawn. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it is. Hold your hand up against it. You'll see all the blue iridescence. You know what I'm saying, though. It's not like a, I know, a it's not morning dawn. dawn. This has a little bit more sexiness to it. Yeah, exactly. It's way more subtle. But it's if you hold your hand up to it, you'll see it change color. It's That's one of the cool things we do with all of our soft plastics right now, except the Marauder. The Marauder's injection injected here in the USA. And uh, but but the Magic Flick, the Miyagi Swimmer, and our Creep swim baits. Those are made abroad in a factory that, that really does an awesome job for us. And uh, we use a ton of these iridescent powders and you get like all these color and light changing effects. And, you know, depending on the color, mm. it's pretty cool. That's solid right there, man. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. So anyways, guys, colors are great, man. Lock, yeah, so, that, bravo. Know that color's gone. And, you know, and listen, so. I'm a, I'm a drop shotter. I use these. I recommend them. They will catch fish. It's uh, it's an impressive bait. I was fishing it where there was a lot of gobies. Okay, I didn't even have an opportunity yet to fish it around other bait fish and perch, and it definitely performed to my satisfaction. Um, yeah, we had a great day. We we could show much of that video that I made of that, but we caught. If Tom's on, Tom, did we not catch a hundred plus smallmouth that day? Tom's on. He'll vouch for that day we had out there um before we go any further because i do want to talk about a couple of these other plastics of course uh in the comments guys let us know if you're picking some of these baits up they are going to work um if you bought some from from the website tonight give me a i don't know tell me what you bought let me know travis i got a serious question okay. and I'm, I'm not even kidding all my buddies know this i've been drinking a couple of beers i gotta pee dude should yeah. i pee <laughs> So here's oh. here's what you're allowed one break uh, per session here. So and it's we still got you got another 11 minutes. So if you I'm just kidding. Go take Dude, it. I this. seriously can't. I'm like I'll pee in a cup. I've got I'll a cup. Take this. Eric and take I him, got take him off screen, bro. Yeah, you're good. You're good, Derek. Go go do your thing. Tom Nee said you guys caught a million fish. A million now. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. That one was, million, one billion small. Listen, Tom, where were you in the auction? No, before? no, Tom Nee is there. He said it. No, the other Tom, I'm a little upset. He wasn't at the auction. He was at the auction. He wasn't doing his job. No, you said Alex was gonna do it, man. So you you knocked him out of the auctioneer slot. Because your first auctioneer you didn't lock up. Yeah. R.I.P. man. Jimmy's done. It's twice you guys have broken up now. He's not coming back. What do you mean, Jim? Jimmy Big Jim? Time's out. You'll never see him again on Smallmouth Crush. It's over. Explain that one to me. It's over. You've heard, have you talked to him? Been. No. It's over. Why? You rolled him under the bus live, bro. Because I called him on on live? Un okay. Unfairly. Yeah, anybody unfairly. Unfairly. You know he gave you a reason. To me? No, you... You gave he, he gave been, you he gave you a reason. He gave me a reason a week earlier, but it was a good one. You got to admit. Hey, hey, I don't want to call you a dickhead, but listen to me, dickhead. Now, now we might break up. I'm going to tell you this right now. now. What are you going to do? You lose Jimmy big time and EE e. in a week. No. That's if fucked Jimmy, up. If Jimmy's butt, okay, I hate the word butthurt, but if you're a grown man getting upset over this because I called him on a live stream in a funny way, in a funny but serious way, all I was asking for is an excuse, Jimmy. If you're hurt over that. I'm sorry. Don't talk to me, man. You got to call him. You're, you you guys have well, to Now I got to call him. and apologize. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to Venmo that money I gave him from the last auction and take that back. <laughs> For his service? You talking crazy now, man. You're no. digging that hole deeper. Dude, just stop. Have you ever talked to that guy or that grass bed show, you know, that you put out there? Did you I mend that fence yet? So that's it. One down, two down. Man, you're you're on a roll. I don't think Jimmy. I I didn't lose Jimmy yet. There's I still hope. hope for Jimmy. I sure hope not. 
It'd be you fine almost, if you're making an appearance right now. Not a chance. If I'm there was a if I, I if there was a million dollars, you wouldn't get him. <laughs> <laughs> you know that million dollars that we get, you wouldn't get him. You'd have to come up with a million and one dollars, maybe then. All right, let's get shocking back. news, man. Let's get back to it, dude. You can't handle the truth. Somebody said the truth color. That was pretty funny, man. The reference on the truth. You want me on that line. You need me on that line. <laughs> Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi. People keep talking about the Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi so you want me to keep talking or what? Yeah. <laughs> Travis is trying to get uh, Jimmy big time right now. Let's see how that works. Right. Out. Yeah, so you were asking earlier, Eric, like what was one of the first baits we came out with? This is Travis. the Miyagi swimmer. Look at this that. You guys picked up the same package at the same time. Incredible. Mind it's melt. It's uh they're three packs. They're super, super soft. So here's I, I can make the opening statement for that bait. Oh, go ahead, Travis, speak. Travis, you're not the owner of Beast Coast. I just want to share a quick story. It, well, wait till he introduces the bait. He just said it was his first bait. He's telling a story. Travis, I mean, yeah. help move your show along, dude. <laughs> I can see her. I can see her getting antsy over there, looking at the clock. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> anyways, this bait right here. This is the Miyagi swimmer. So yep. you can see they're super soft. This thing has such a beautiful swim action. It's a 4.75 inch swim bait. I mean, yeah. for all intents and purposes, it's a five inch swim bait. But if you look, it's it's not it's it's a big bait for for yeah. a small swim bait. It's, and it's got, got a nice presence. Yeah, so we we put this mega hook pocket in it. Big cavity. Big, I'm sure we're gonna get the uh, the the classic. The hook pocket looks like a vagina comment. <laughs> <laughs> I get every time. Every time I post it on social media, I get it. <laughs> what the heck, man? Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't really think about that, but but uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, so this bait was this hook pocket is it, it, it actually tapers up. It's not just like a little shallow hook pocket. It tapers like really high towards the back right here, right where a six zero owner beast hook will will. Ah, uh, sweet. Back. No pun intended. <laughs> well, nice. <laughs> but yeah, so the bait swims just really beautifully. Um, this material is neutrally buoyant too. Um, the Magic Flick and the Miyagi Swimmer, we both use the same formula. It's a light salt, heavy garlic oil. And uh, if you use too much salt, it, it kills the action on a lot of swim baits. Um, mm. Depending on the type of a swim bait. Like Kitek, they use a lot of whatever they use. They're, they're squid and salt and stuff. And their baits always swim through and beautifully with a real tiny little kick. This thing has like a big thump and um, man, it'll swim just as slow as you can retrieve it. It'll swim. And Ooh. this is like one of our more popular baits from the beginning. Really. Uh, we've got a ton of detail in it. I don't know if you guys can even see that, but um, yeah, we got like the nostril and the gill details and the big eyes, which is way more important than, than a nostril and the gill detail because fish actually, you know, if you look at a bait fish underwater, like the first thing that pops out to you is the eye and the profile. So yeah, yeah big sagging belly. And uh, this bait's, this is an awesome bait. You can throw this thing on a half ounce and up jig head too. Um, there's a couple yeah. of good jig heads. Scottsboro yeah. Tackle Company makes a really good swim jig head. Striking, they make a good um, big swim bait jig head. Did you uh, make a crazy swim jig head for that at one point? Uh, we custom. Yeah, actually, a while ago, the Dream Balance, and you know that. Yeah. Design, sorry, I'm getting lost in these comments. I know, dude, it's crazy. Oh, it's fun. Kicks when you crawl it. Yes, it does. Favorite mm -hmm. hook the creep. The creep is a an eight o keel weighted owner beast, whereas the Miyagi swimmer is a six o. But you can also you know, fish this bait on a five o. But uh, I'm sorry, what'd you ask me, man? <laughs> <laughs> that custom swim jig head. Yeah, that green that, out yeah. that tungsten resin. I'm actually we're gonna revisit that and uh, okay. tweak a little bit because there's there's something missing out there 
which is a good swim bait head for five to seven inch swim baits. And the reason is because they need a keel. And that's because there's so much material in a five to seven inch swim bait. If you put all the weight up here, which is what any yeah. traditional swim bait head does, it swims yeah. wonky because it points down. And yeah. it's, so, so that's, it's interesting you bring that up, dude. I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm definitely yeah, no, it, it came from freestyle bass fishing. Thank you for the excellent comment, man. Yeah, I love, I love, see, that's why I love small tackle companies because they can think about a problem in the market. You know, I would love to see uh, back in the day when I first got into swim jig fishing, I was at a, a, a actually a Bassmasters Classic, man, and met some dudes from the West Coast. And they're like, you know, swim jigs, I know you throw them on your river, dude, but size up, size up. I sized up one spring. Um, and this is when the chatterbait craze wasn't even on the on the radar for a lot of people. And dude, it was ridiculous the size bites I was getting by super sizing my swim jig. And um, I'll just leave it at that. So um, people guys, throw the Miyagi swimmer on the back of a chatterbait. Mm, mm. I caught. I, I had my best day of fall fishing in my life. Doing Isn't that. that crazy? Did you take the, the the skirt off or did you leave the skirt on? No, I took the skirt off. Yeah, well, were you throwing? Were you throwing well, a jackhammer? For some of the time, I took two trips and both trips were awesome. One trip I caught one over six, and the other Isn't that trip crazy? Was a nineteen pound bag. This is just fun fishing. I don't have time to. Fish. I wanted to fish tournaments, and I might this year. My boat got struck by lightning, but that's a whole different story. But uh, yeah, man. What the fuck? Whoa, whoa, whoa! You got to tell that story like right now. Not an impressive story. I live up in by Candlewood Lake, and you know it's what real hilly. And I live up on top of a hill, and fucking lightning struck my rock wall, and the the charge traveled up the skeg, and it fried the ECU, all kinds of other stuff in the outboard. My ground, oh, shit, oh, I was a mess. So oh that's, my god, that's been like months in the making. But uh, that's crazy, to, man. El Salto. No, but but seriously, that the Miyagi on a chatterbait is definitely like it, I think a lot of people think it's crazy because a lot of people like to use like a fluke or like a little, you know, the focus is not the trailer on a chatterbait. It's like, how do I rip this thing through grass or whatever? And, you know, trailers are generally not big swim baits, but it's that that thing was awesome. I, I there's a lot of people that throw it that I know, you know, I don't know if any pros throw it, but I know it gets big bites. And obviously, yeah. <laughs> what how deep are you fishing at miyagi swimmer when you're throwing that six out beast hook what what size weight is is typically in, in your think, opinion the perfect match and marry for that bait the Miyagi. Yeah, well, any any keel weighted swim bait hook honestly you can rig the miyagi swimmer on any keel weighted swim bait hook in the market fair enough downs if, if i don't know if there's any brands that make a 5.0 hook which is the smallest size hook you should use on the miyagi swimmer i don't know if any 5.0s have an eighth ounce, but if you could find one, an eighth ounce will keep that bait swimming perfectly. All you need is an eighth ounce. That's Honestly, awesome that would work, but I don't think anybody makes that. But you can get a beast hook with no weight on it, and then what you I can do is that. you can. The material no. is neutrally, the material's like neutrally buoyant. So no, I no, what I mean is, is, and then crimp an eighth ounce egg sinker oh, on it. Oh, you can definitely it. crimp. That's what oh, I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, you crimp, you crimp your own weight. So you get your side hook you need. And then yeah. you get that, you know, lighter weight. If, if for me, I'm thinking about it in grass applications. Yeah. I need to keep that thing on higher tide. You know, as the waters fall on that Miyagi swimmer swim above the grass patches when we get yeah. post spawn, you know, big, big swim baits get big bites on our rivers. So that's great. It's got the hook pocket. You can keep it shot, you know, you know, super weedless. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, no, that's, like, yeah. That, that's true. But, but as far as just an off the rack, the best hook yeah. for that is a six Oh quarter ounce keel weighted owner beast because if, you know, depending on what, what reel you're using and rod you're using, you can, and line, you can keep that pretty high in the water column because the bait's not tiny. It's a pretty big bodied five inch. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. So a quarter ounce is not going to like want to drive that thing down. So yeah, it won't overpower it right on, and right on, on the package too. If you look at the package, it says, I don't know if you can see it, but it says, oh, I can't get used to this freaking screen. It says use 6 0 keel weighted swim bait hook right there. <laughs> That's right. On. It's foolproof. Anyway. You made it foolproof. So, I dig it, man. So Eric, that was first one. Eric, real quick, did Travis just bail? I'm right he's here. here. Oh, he's there he is. He dick. He's hiding. He, he, he had to get right, man. He just found him some scotch. Hey, when are we gonna talk about this? Yeah, so that is that that's a marauder. That's like 
You, I've already seen so many comments about the Marauder. That's this so sexy. And since Travis only throws little tiny girly baits, I don't think that he'll, he'll know much Look, about it. Travis. Travis, Upper Bay. I know. This is the Marauder. So this actually is one of our top-selling baits. It's a big flipping bait. Um, the flanges aren't broken on this. You want to break the flanges, obviously, on the claws. Um, like that. A lot of guys, I think, are – well, I know a lot of guys are using this as – you know, if you cut it right here, it makes a phenomenal jig trailer if you don't want to flip it because the claws are really big and they want to, like, sit up in the water column. But when it comes down, I always wanted something that, that didn't have, like, a huge flap, like a rage – you know, like a men – no, a menace doesn't, but, like, a rage crawl. You know, that's got, like, a huge heavy flap. This is closer to, like, a menace-style bait where you've got – like, these have a bulb at the end of the claw and a little flange, too. And so they'll vibrate super fast coming down through the water. And it's just a big profile. It moves a lot of water. Um, and, yeah, just it's just a good big flipping bait. A lot of guys use this uh, jig trailer on a big shaky head, too. Mm. And, oh, whoa, 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 on a big shaky head. What? Yeah, I mean, picture the thing, man. Look at it. Dude, dude. Dude. So, yeah. Ooh. Talk so about a different presentation, uh, man. Just naked. Yeah, exactly. A lot of I think a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. Great ideas for the, for the peeps on the stream. Yeah, and then another thing guys are doing, there's a video out there of, you know, you rig these things sideways or vertical on the back of a chatterbait. Chatterbait, sure. So this is basically what's hanging off the back of the chatterbait, except vertical. And they they just, they go insane. And I, when you know I what's really that, cool, man, is that you're giving people ideas to carry one bag of plastics for three applications, four applications, jig yeah, trailer, I mean, I flipping it. bait, chatter bait, uh, shaky, you know, big stepped up shaky jig. Yeah, and then when you bust the baits up, you just cut them off right here behind the head and use it as a jig chunk or a trailer. So, Dude, cool bait. Right. definitely like a utilitarian bait. I think oh, man. How about on a swing head? Somebody just said on a swing head. Hell yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot you can do with it. It's a big creature bait. It's just, you know, I love the design of the bait. It's got real, real deep uh, ribs, almost similar to like a D-bomb's deep ribs. I love that aspect about the D-bomb. Just being oh, great bubbles, man. Yeah, man. It, yeah, it vibrates off the cover. Scent and, uh, but mm -hmm. if you look at it, it's got a, just, a, it looks exactly like, I mean, it's a, it looks just like a big old crawfish. And especially when you're fishing it on, uh, like a swing head or or a stand up or shaky, you know, you can imagine what these these claws look like just flat. Yeah, Travis, out. Travis, do you have a tank shot of that? I think I saw a marauder in your tank, bro. You got one? <laughs> <laughs> He's driving to Jimmy's house to see if he can patch it up. Oh, that was a good one, Travis. <laughs> swim jig, hold on, real quick. Swim jig fifty. All the good yeah. colors in the magic flip. So first of all, all the colors are good, and I know that's a biased statement. But swim jig fifty. Anyways, are all the colors sold out? I can't imagine. We had a lot of stock. I, I don't know, man. That's what I'm hearing, dude. There's 320 people on here, man. Did it just go boom? I, I heard some chatter earlier in the stream. I was watching the co comments, Derek, and people were like selling out fast, man. So I don't know. Maybe I mean, they did. Maybe they hit you hard. Yeah, it looks. Hold on. Oh, I hate messing with web items. Uh oh. Are you you checking your inventories right now? Yeah, I've had to. This is one thing that I hate doing. That yep. since when you own your own business, you need to understand like. Just the back end of the website for basic functions and stuff. I hate this shit. I really do. I got you, man. Can you I got you. Hear me? We can hear you. Are you okay? Eric, I'm taking you off the screen real quick. I'm going to blow everybody's mind. You guys have no clue what that jig trail <laughs> is. anti tackle boxes. <laughs> are you ready? Hey, are you ready? Are you ready? Do it. This jig trailer should be cut in half just like I did and thrown on a drop shot. Boom. Oh, why would you do that? Ew. Yeah. 
Look at that. I'm serious. Well, you have fun with that. <laughs> Dude, I'm serious. I mean, it looks good. I just am like a purist. Like, I use the magic flick to drop shot, not that. No, you use that. <laughs> what? Dude, I swear. What do you got to say about that? I'm done with Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just said, why? Ruined. Thank uh, you. Travis, I like the creativity. I thought that was interesting. Uh, but, hey, let's talk about the plastic formulation of the Marauder. I'm looking at the jig in the tank, and I'm seeing the claws still in a stand-up position. Is that a dual density? How did you achieve what, what I just saw in the tank? Well, you know why? Because on the Marauder, we don't add a ton of salt. Because when you add right salt on. and baits, it makes them safe. Sure. sure. The claws too. Unless you're using – there's buoyant formulas out there. We sure. Don't use that. We use kind of a neutrally buoyant formula, and they actually soak in actual crawfish oil. There's a company out there called uh, Pro Procure. Yeah, I'm out. No yeah. fucking way, dude. You use yeah, Pro Procure. Round up crawfish. There's no such thing as crawfish dude. oil extract. It's actual. If anybody out there in the comments and you guys have probably heard of Pio Procure, I use it all the time. That, that's half Procure. Pro These rolling rocks are catching up to me. It's half Procure and half something else, and that's a little bit of a, a secret, but. Um, yeah, and they, they, they get injected with that stuff, and then they also soak in it before they get packed out in bulk. So That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, a, it's, an awesome, it's an awesome scent. It kind of smells like popcorn, actually. Like I, think, popcorn. I think Procure is one of the best scents made out there. I use it in salt water. When I'm, when I'm like speckled trout fishing or flounder fishing, I, I douse my stuff in Procure. You Procure is mean, awesome, man. Gel. Not marketing BS there. It's just it's nah, a great, great paint. Plus amino acids, like that's what they do. Right and on, man. I I used they, to use that. Uh, I used to use um, Lunker City, freaking crawl oil, and dude, I was using that like in two examples. Like I was getting all the bites, and there was only one difference. It was the same jig with same cover, but they just wanted that scent for some reason. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's real ground up crawfish. They literally have production grade facilities where they take like, you know, tons of crawfish from the, from the bayou or wherever. Yeah. And they just. No, it was Riverside. It was Riverside crawl oil. Sorry, man. Riverside. Riverside yeah. Riverside. Remember Riverside that? Shit? Paints, right? It was called Riverside Real Crawl. They made baits and they made crawl oil. And that dude, crawl that oil. Was I, awesome. Dude, I, I believed in it, man, because it was Riverside real crawfish. Good stuff, man. It was, it, was real, it was real crawfish, dude. I was sold. I hear you. Look at these comments. Travis making creature baits gay again. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that. I really like, I'm not, you know, it is what it is. That's uh, Mac, Matka. So. Matka. Have Derek <laughs> on the live stream. Lock Holmes. That's First right. All, this was amazing. You, you guys got, you ha Derek, you got a, a huge, awesome lineup. One last, I mean, we kind of talked about, is there any other baits you want to talk about? Oh, <laughs> uh, actually, man, I'm good. I, I can tell you're cutting me short here. No, I just. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, listen. Yeah, we were kind of on a roll there, Travis, but thanks for jumping in. <laughs> Take advantage of the BeastCoastFishing.com <laughs> code BC15. I don't want to cut you guys off. No, you're doing good. Dude, I do want to make a. I'm good. I'm ready to listen to the next guest. No, I want to make a special announcement. I was excited. Oh, yeah, man. Let's talk. Dude. I forgot about that. We Real got quick. something special. This is huge. Yo, Guggen player, sorry. I'm just, I'm nothing's that funny. I just have like five beers in me and I never get to talk about fishing, so I'm just happy. So that's I'm why gonna I put that. something up on the on the screen for y'all. Y'all. And there it is. I'd like to introduce you. The Beast Coast, Smallmouth of Crush proved. That's your open water jig. We haven't thought of a name, just be honest. Yeah, we haven't thought of a name yet. This is an open water finesse jig. It's not done yet. That's just the jig. There's more to come to it, and we're just teasing you a little bit. But look at that bad boy. That's going to be available for sale by early spring. Yeah, I mean, hoping, you know, 
That this item is made out of tungsten resin, so the lead time on production for that is longer than lead, but it's it's a better material for what you want it for, Travis. So let's call it mid-April. We should have stock of this, and and obviously you can talk to people about it, but that's a skirted jig. And so this, uh, this jig has been in in the works for quite a while. In fact, I used a jig very similar to this for years. Uh, back when I was in Wisconsin. Hugen Slayer, two on. It's a two odd hook. It's going to be listen, this jig Travis. I made a a protocol back what? Probably no, proto pro prototype. Protocol is what protocol. they use when they're about to launch Travis a nuclear weapon. Travis we made a protocol Let me Any four meal plans. Does Travis have a boyfriend? <laughs> first of all, this is great. First of all, 84 Neil. <laughs> I'm hanging here. This is the best. That's the best symbol. Uh, uh, screen, whatever that is. You see that old medicine mask and that witch hat? <laughs> That's legit, bro. Every time I see you make a comment, I, I just stare at that because that freaks me the fuck out. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, that thing. <laughs> Travis, go ahead. I'm sorry. Talk about the prototype because it is. Okay, I just, first of all, Eric and I, we actually, uh, he put this together a year ago. Yeah. And I want a finesse jig that has very few strands that emphasizes the jig trailer over the jig. And these are going to be for applications where you would, you know, drag a tube, throw a Ned rig. This is when this comes into play, guys. We're going to be super excited to bring that to you. It's a little premature. Hold that jig up again, Eric. Yeah, this is the jig I would hold up to actually get Travis to end the stream, to tease. He said, if you don't oh. take that thing off, I'm going to end the show right now. And I one time he... That. You did end the show because I so, held it up. So last year in probably March, you started yeah. hinting and you were about one second away from showing that jig to everybody. And I cut the freaking screen. I, we shut, we shut yeah. the live show down instantly. Yeah. 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 So, so Derek, no, is it going to be living rubber, the skirt? Because I use living rubber. I thought, and we talked about that. You tell us what are the thoughts and Travis, what was your vision for the jig? Um, I, you know, you wanted a smallie beaver on the sample, but let's talk about why the why behind you, this design. I want to know right. what application, okay. what situation. So, there's a, there's a, so typically, oh, look, can, I, can I can I say something yes. first? Yeah. yeah, hell yeah. You sure, Travis? Yes. So people said, uh, you know, Kai Tech and Rains make these. So I think what Travis is going to talk about and what's what's going to be unique about ours. First of all, yeah, Kai Tech and, and Rains do make them and they make great products. So ours wait, are, I, I'm going to say something right now. I got to stop you right now in your tracks and I got to stop Travis in his tracks. I think the hooks on those jigs are freaking too small. I'm a fan. I've caught fish on them. But the hooks, in Eric, my Eric, opinion, what you're talking are, about for this I swear to God, I think they are. All right. Before you go. Yeah, but Eric, those are, are small two O's. This is we're. Real we quick, just got the damn name for this jig. We just got the name for this jig by the creepy dude named 84 Neil Bone. What is it? The Mothman. Oh shit. Damn. That is creepy. Mothman. Damn. The Mothman. I do for you are the <laughs> Mothman. It's actually good for you that it's your jig, the Mothman. I love it. I really do love it. Can I, let me say one thing and then Travis, you can talk. So the difference is between the range I'm and the high tech. Yeah. I had this is unbelievable. Are you pissed, Travis? You can talk. No, I'm super answer. happy, man. The Mothman. No, Are you the Mothman? He's sure. he's loving yeah, the he's loving the name. I'm gonna hold up that hook. You comment on that hook. That's a hook on a tube jig that uh, Travis uh, poured lead and sent it to my house. You follow me? It, it is a, a brand, but it to me that tube hook, man, is legit it's right it's not too big for smallies i can catch large mouth on it and it's got holding power and that's what so, that book well, is. eric so we're using a custom 2-0 that we that travis actually should get samples of tomorrow but before i forget all right i love the fact that you're doing a custom hook love it okay i'm yes. gonna shut up go go no, just real quick dude the the, the, the i just want to answer people are asking about kai tech and raids yeah. yeah so so basically our trailer keeper is going to be phenomenal. It's got, if you look at the, now look, if you, yeah, there's a bunch of companies that make a tungsten or tungsten resin or tungsten compound, whatever you want to call it, you know, dragging style football jig or ball head jig. This keeper on this jig is going to be phenomenal for bigger baits. Like Travis, I know is going to fish a lot of small creature baits on this, but this will also hold a Kitek like glue. And I know you can just use super glue, but a lot of guys don't like to do that. This actually has like a series of four ridges 
It's got a side barb as well as a wire barb. So I, I think a big point of difference is this is going to have the best keeper of any of these style jigs out there. And then we're using a custom tungsten compound that's got our own proprietary blend of tungsten resin and filler. So Love it's going it. to be hard enough to where you can feel everything on the bottom. It's soft enough to where if it gets wedged in between rocks, you can pop it free because I'm like, or, or tungsten compounds that have too much tungsten in it. If you're fishing solely around rock, like tungsten will not give a fraction of a millimeter. This you'll actually be able to pull free from a rock wedge or, or whatever else. So, and our skirts are going to be awesome. We're going to do a couple marabou puffball skirts. Travis has his own skirts, which he can talk about now. I'm done, Travis. But I, it, it is going to be different, you guys. And our colors are going to be phenomenal. Sorry, I'm just Hey, gonna, hey I, I, Travis. I, Travis, say <laughs> say Chris said call it the track the Dracula jig. I don't like Draculas. <laughs> no, no, count Dracula. <laughs> Listen, I <laughs> You're a vampire. So I like the Mothman <laughs> because I'm fascinated with the Mothman. And and Derek, I know you don't know nothing about the Mothman, but do some. I mean, I don't, what is the Mothman? Are you talking about the movie? No, he just shows oh. up, dude. He shows up, man. It's like a it's like a it's a it's a bat, but it's not. It's like a bird yeah. man, dude. No, no, dude. No, it's okay. Man. I know what the Mothman is. That's part of the movie. It's the East Coast Chubacabra, but it's a man. <laughs> the Chubacabra. I think and, he's in the family of the Yeti beast, and yeah, the Yeti Trevor, man. Why don't you pull your the jig up real quick and and just finish your your All kind right. of applications, et cetera, and then and then if you want me to leave, I'll leave. <laughs> no, I want you to stay. I want you to stay because this is important. So I would like the sizes I wanted was uh, obviously we we want something smaller, so a quarter ounce, a three eighths, and a half ounce for those deeper applications. It's not going to have a weed guard because weed guards don't do shit for one. And second of all, I don't want those fish seeing, even if it's a, a clear weed guard, I want this to be a finesse jig and I want eight, nine, 10, 15, 20 strands. I want like small amount of strands and I want the jig head, the, the jig trailer to be the emphasis of this jig. A lot of times it's the jig, you know, the skirts, and then you just add the trailer. The emphasis, what the smallmouth are seeing, what they're keying in on, are going to be the jig trailer. So it's hard to, you know, without a skirt on this, it, it's hard to do, to do justice. But picture just putting a, a smallie beaver on this with a few strands and throwing that wherever you would throw a tube. That's what we're doing. We're giving those fish a different look. And I've used this for years secretly and have caught hundreds of big smallmouth on this jig but we hand tied it we had shitty we just poured some lead and some do it mold and it looked like shit and it worked kind of looked like this shitty one but yeah, yeah there you go like eric's shitty jig eric's is more of an aspirin head versus like a dragging football style head oh yeah this, this is this is a two head jig man that's all this it was is the deal guys it, it is the deal and it's going to catch fish and i'm going to catch a shit ton of, of smallmouth with it now, there's another application. I'm not going to get into it right now. When it comes out, I will certainly share. But you're going to be able to catch some big largemouth on this as well. I'm going to show you how. That's all I got. There's a couple other uh, names that people will have suggested. The tin foiler. Nice. Yeah, the tin foiler would be I good. I want to know in the comments, can you guys visualize that skirt added to it? And Especially if trailer. I just hold it, if I hold it up that skirt with the with the beaver. Yeah, let me let me, and, let me yeah. Let me pull this off. Hold on real quick. Here. David Chad, it looks good. Wish it was a recessed eyelet. So it is a semi-recessed eyelet, which I think I think gives a lot of the same benefit. Sorry, I'm like so caught up in these comments. I cannot oh, dude, for sure. I cannot stress the importance. I wanted a jig like this for years, for years. And I approached Krasha. I approached Derek well over a year ago about this, and it's finally coming to life. You're going to see me throw this a lot, and that quarter size is going to be perfect on the spinning rod. And then when you get in that deeper water and you, you need to get down that 20, 25, 30 foot range, that half ounce will come into play. You can drag this. You can. You're going to fish it just like you would a tube, and you're going to be able to use a variety of baits. Listen. 
I love those little Z-Man trailers. We went with a two-out hook that's perfect for that size. This isn't a big deal. This isn't a big bait. We're throwing little Kitex on the back of it. We're throwing – did I just say Kitex? I kind of kind of messed up. I didn't want to give that away. That's what a ton of people are going to do, so that's all I good. Know. Maybe a three we're throwing, we're throwing that stuff on it. We're throwing Z-Man little finesse TRDs on it, and we're definitely going to be throwing like a baby – uh, uh, like a Somali beaver for sure, a creature bait on this. It's uh, it's gonna be legit. I want to know in the comments if you guys are interested in in picking up some of these when they become available because I'm super excited about it. So another another difference, real quick, that you know, again, like I I, I don't like when anybody like it is what it is. It's fishing tackle. There's a lot of sameness and similarity, but one of the things Travis wanted too is like there's a lot of brands that make awesome tungsten or tungsten compound dragging style jigs or, or ball head or pillow, whatever you want to call them. The, um, we're going to have the ability to really do beautiful powder coating on these. So outside of the fact that the keeper is going to be phenomenal for pretty much anything you want to put on it, including Z man baits. Cause we, we talked about doing a screw lock on this, but you know, Travis likes to use certain, certain Z man baits. And so outside of the actual trailer keeper being excellent, and the hook being a custom little midwire 2-0, the, the, the color schemes are going to be phenomenal, and the price point is going to be fair. Right. And that's always now, been something now, like now, Derek, now, now, you you came up – so I had the idea of we, – we were really working hard on the trailer, uh, or as far as the – um, you know, how to design it so it will keep the trailer keeper or the keeper for those jigs. As I'm looking at it here, you – you designed it perfectly. You know, we wanted you, you. You pressed me a little bit to do the screw lock. <laughs> well, I didn't you press, did. but I questioned you. You questioned me hard, dude. <laughs> you, there's a lot of Z-Man products that I like to use with this, and there's no way you're threading that up through there. And that's why we went with it. If you're gonna put a 2.8 Kitek on, yes, you're gonna burn through a little bit more uh, plastic because it doesn't have the screw lock. But listen, it's going to catch fish. You're going to be happy. Just deal with it. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Mike drop. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm ex I just want to use it because I know here locally where we are, I mean, I don't like to fish this way, but so many people drag a little swim bait on a half ounce or smaller or right around a half ounce football style jig or dragging style jig. And I am actually – so like Travis wants – 15 to 22 strands of silicone of, of thin of real thin diameter silicone in his colors so we'll have a couple of travis's colors with just real minimal skirting it'll be real fine real soft silicone Do you want to talk about those colors real quick so i don't really want to talk about the colors i'd rather okay. keep them on All the right. down yeah you definitely don't want somebody out there poaching it right All now, right. bro i mean you know everybody's gonna see them soon i'm st i want to get this thing out there it's gonna be beautiful it's gonna be such a beautiful how long thing. how long did it take from prototype to production what's your what's your oh, timeline now and as soon as i understood what travis had in his head we just have like a quick hour and a half talk and sure. he explained to me how he's going to use it what trailers he's going to use and where he's going to fish it and and then uh and then you know i got a pen and ink did it real wow. quick and then i took that to the computer and then we got it 3d and then we got the concept and then from the concept 3d which is not quite as pretty as what travis was sharing we just that goes to the factory the mold maker and then the mold maker machine shop whatever you want to call it that's where we are right now the final 3d is done and the molds are being built so yeah it's just uh fantastic it's moving man. along it's moving along <laughs> that goes into what some people just look at as like a jig head but it's not really a jig head there's so many different components this is skirted of course yeah. the keeper's got you know two parts it's not just molded it's got a wire barb too the skirt will be hand tied so there's, dude, a there's a there's a lunker city jig head that has that similar style keeper i throw a lot of z-man plastics in the salt for speckled trout and they do not come off that style keeper so if Travis has got a, 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 a an idea in his brain to throw some Z-Man plastics on that, that thing will hold those plastics like crazy. Yeah, especially because if you look at it from the top, it's got little side barbs. And it's oh, all dude, like forget about it. It's so not coming off. Like, you know, because the, the, the larger diameter of those like ribs, 
Yeah. That, really, and, and the fact that they're forward facing. Yeah. That, and stuff really well by nature but for bigger trailers like a, like again travis can use these little creature baits like for bigger trailers that barb and then the right sound that's oh that, you i'm pushing dude, it back forget so, about it you pinch it oh my god you got two on one on each side unbelievable yeah it's gonna be fun man uh super, super excited cool. listen i i could talk all night but we do have to bring our next guests in Let's do you're, it. You're, welcome, you're, you're welcome to hang with us Guys, last chance, beastcoastfishing.com. Code I have, I, I have 15. Code. BC 15. I got a question. People are saying if you're what happened to your volume? If, if you got a, if you're out of stock in a particular what? You're good. Okay. If you're out of stock and, and they already put it in their cart and you're back in stock, will they still get the discount once things are back in stock? Because the people got well, there's a lot of backlog of ordering going on right now or trying to. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll tell you what we can do, Travis. If you want, you can we can we can do like a physical inventory or check the computer and just do like an inventory count tomorrow on the site, and then maybe you can email guys the code and a link to the site, I and that way they can revisit the site if there's more stock. If you want, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Or not. Does that mean that seems like a lot of work? Whatever, yeah. if you guys, yeah, whatever you, whatever you ask, I'll do. It. <laughs> Travis, <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> yeah, Travis, Travis, it's why you have an intern. Uh, I'll do it for you, or, or I won't. Bring on your next guest, man. This has been awesome. Nah, first man, it's Eric, man. Great, great to meet you, bro. That. No, yeah, so dude, I really enjoyed it. Um, your baits are all, like I can't say enough about them. I'm super excited about this project. You're an awesome dude. Okay, everyone, they relate to you, dude. Like. You're legit. You know what I mean? Like fucking super Hi, cool man. dude. So that's all I got. Um, I, I, I got to go home and are you, are you rolling out, bro? I think I'm going, who you got coming on here, dude? Well, that's a secret. That's a secret. Yeah. We got a guy named BTC who always wrecks. He's a party crasher. <laughs> and we got Oliver coming up. Oh, and I see Takahiro Mori, but I don't know if that's real. Let, let me just hold on a second. Let me just, yeah, talk, talk might be talks in the house. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Listen, we're going to remove him real quick. We're removing talk BTC Oliver. You guys hold on. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we will be right back. Travis, Travis, real quick. Yeah, yes, don't, sir. Don't wait right now. Yeah, I'm waiting. My wife texted me and she goes, this is hilarious. Uh, Travis and this other guy got into it while you were peeing. The best part, which is so funny, is that everybody picks on Travis. Thank <laughs> you. All right, we'll be right back, guys. Sorry, dude. <laughs> All good. <laughs> Have you ever wondered if your electronics are set up perfectly or perhaps there's a, a specific technique that you just want to learn a little bit more about? Maybe you have a tournament coming up on a new body of water and you want a second pair of eyes on how to approach that. Maybe it's your home body of water and you want to go through some seasonal patterns. I'm offering a service called the Smallmouth Crush One-on-One. -on -One. It's actually a web-based program so we can meet virtually and I can answer any fishing related question that you may have any topics any questions we're going to go into detail and then we're going to be able to record that conversation so you can have a copy of that and look look over that in the future it's a really neat program i'm excited to offer and if you want to take advantage of this all you have to do is head on over to my website travismanson.com upper right hand corner you're going to find the link smallmouth crush one on one and it goes into detail as far as what that service has to offer, and I look forward to chatting with you. The Real Shot is Wisconsin's number one independent outdoors pro shop that specializes in bass fishing gear and tackle. We've got all of the biggest and most sought after brands in bass fishing all under one roof. Our online shop has a massive catalog of some of the greatest bass products you'll need to find success on the water. We ship fast and nationwide, so head on over and see what we have to offer by visiting www.therealshot.com today. Yo, as you guys know, Smallmouth Crush does the live stream every week. It's a blast. I know Epic Eric's having fun. I'm having fun. 
craziness at times, but it's all good. But I wanted to offer a bonus live stream to my viewers, and it's more of a private live stream. So I teamed up with a company called Patreon, and Patreon allows viewers of the show, viewers of the channel, fans of the channel, followers of the channel, whatever, you guys, an opportunity to sign up. It's a paid monthly subscription. So it's $10 a month, cancel anytime. And that'll give you access to one bonus live stream per month. So the next bonus live stream is going to be January 16th. And then in February, February 6th, we're going to do a bonus live stream. And so if that's something you want to take advantage of, you can go to any of my videos and check out the description. You'll see a link to the Patreon site as well as the description right below here in this live video. So after this video, if you're interested in taking a look at how to sign up, you can do that. Like I said, it's $10 a month. You guys are just supporting the channel and I really appreciate it. It's going to be cool too, because we're going to talk about things that we wouldn't necessarily talk about to the general public, if you will. So I want to give you guys a little something special for coming over there. We're going to be able to answer your questions at a more personal level because there won't be as many live viewers at that time. And I believe All right, that's enough, Travis. Shut the f <laughs> up. We ain't got time for this stuff. We got people waiting for us. Listen, Derek, I appreciate it. Travis, who did, I can't who shut did this your guy off over who, here. Who did your hair and makeup for that one? Because you got this little tit of hair coming out the side. It's a remnant of that Amish haircut you gave yourself. I mean, I'm no better, bro. I got some bad shit going on. Yeah, my you call me Amish, you can call me whatever you want. Don't call me fucking Dracula. That's all I'm saying. It's too late for that, bro. You've earned it. Derek, 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 I appreciate you coming out. Are you going to hang out with us a little bit, or what's your story? No, I'm getting texts from the wife. She's okay. She's Listen, listening. this was awesome. Holy crap, man. Good job. Yeah, this was so much fun. Here, man. Nice You're welcome back. You're welcome back anytime. Yeah, guys. Thank you so Peace. much. Peace out, brother. All right, buddy. See we'll guys. see you. All right. Wow. Dude, that, that was, was good ridiculous. shit, man. Ridiculous. I hope everybody's enjoying the live stream. This is crazy. Um, records have been broken tonight for sure. Super excited about that little sneaky jig, dude. Mothman jig. I like it. I like that name. Mothman. The Mothman. The Mothman. Yeah, it sneaks up on them smallies in the depths, man. They won't even know what happened. They've been inducted by the Mothman. They're going to be in your live well and others swimming All right. around. All right, let's bring away. real quick before, before we bring our guests in, guys. If you go to the description, you can get 15% off the Jackal Riser at the Real Shot right now today. You head on over there, grab that bait. I'm sure you've spent a lot of money with uh, Beast Coast tonight, and we do appreciate that. Oh, shit. Are you ready for this, dude? Small mouth crush after hours. Anything goes. Anything <laughs> goes. I mean, we might be walking around the neighborhood, BTC's neighborhood, for all I know, later tonight. It's very possible. Let's bring them on. <clears throat> Come on, man. Bring the heat. Jackal riser. The jackal riser. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? Green, BTC in the house. You guys. It's about time. <laughs> I brought this man from the West Coast. Unbelievable, oh, man. Yay. Good night, man. Uh, Oliver. What do you think of the fishing, man? I heard you got on some good perch and crappie the other day. <laughs> Miscellaneous dream all day. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> What do you say oh man, is there a way to make it up to you, man? I got some baits. I guess I could go. Got some baits I can show you, bro. Yeah, not only that, we had to wait an hour for Travis's. Whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, uh, oh, what's up? Hey, we're here, man. We're ready to go. What's up? I, dude, are, I, yeah. I can't believe you get the chance to hang out with Oliver for like days. That's just. Yeah. Man, BTC, for everything you do for the shows, man, BTC, BTC is the alchemist. What you guys don't know that watch Ike Live and the Bass University Live is that that guy right there is way more than you know and way more than you see. He works his ass off to bring incredible people like the guy sitting next to him live 
in studio. And I've learned so much from those shows, man. I thank you again for all you do, bro. Thank oh, you. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Thank you. Th thank you. But listen, here's the, here's the honest truth. I appreciate that. But honestly, you know how the NBA does like sixth man of the year or whatever that shit is? Hell yeah. I'm middle man of the year. That's all I am. I'm not, I'm here because of Mike, you know, Fair none, enough. Of, none of this is happening without him. And, you know, I just, I just do my thing. I, he brings the opportunities and I try to make plays and, you know, this guy comes from the West coast and I make sure, you know, he comes out here that he's not disappointed that we get on that hot. That <laughs> oh man. Dude. I went on the figure three. I thought was going to come in. <laughs> hey, hey, Oliver. So I, I know, I know he took you out to the Delaware river, right? He did. Walk me through that day, man. Man. Was that? That was the first one. That was yeah. the first one. Yeah, it was an interesting experience for me. I always thought <laughs> Philadelphia. <laughs> not it January. Not, it was not sunny. <laughs> it wasn't warm. Yeah. It was not warm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nah, man. This is this is uh, this is this is just um, really stacking the odds against you. You know, like really, can you catch a bass? And that's that's really what this should be. Can you catch a bass in New Jersey in January? Apparently, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, man uh, well, all you needed was this little magic right here bro come on down oh that's my wow. shaky jig head where man you did I, BCC, I let you down man Dude, i did Oliver, not have Oliver you was up. throwing those big ass swim baits out there no he wasn't man he was trying anything i'm sure he had a micro jig on the end of his line at one point oliver's got some sneaky stuff travis that's right in your mm -hmm. wheel mm -hmm. oh, i bet i right bet house buddy right in your wheel mm -hmm. with the spinning rod in my hands and a big bait yep 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 wow tell us about that man talk maybe, to me bro maybe not <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say i was any good at it but i'm really... <laughs> there's a big difference yeah else to the yeah a yeah. micro jig going from frick six six seven eight ounce baits to 332nd yeah. that must feel weird man let, let me ask you a question dude how do you avoid getting tendonitis chucking big baits have you ever had it and your elbow hurts so bad it brought you to your knees when you swing on a big fish you know i, I honestly have like really tried my best to take care of my body yeah man it's it, it'll wear you out bro i mean right seriously because like when i first really got into it i was yeah three forty pounds lighter and yeah. i have the strength or endurance to keep doing it for as long as I wanted to. So I just seriously started hitting the gym. Right. I mean, man, you talked about a, a, a stretch where you almost put it down the big bait. How many days did you go and trips did you go without a bite? And then you had some magic days. You told yeah. that story. It, it, it varied. It just depends. Yeah. Be like, you can be on them every day for little stretches. And then all of a sudden you yeah. go trip drought. And, oh. and you can't figure out why. Yeah, that's so crazy, man. Yeah. And then you come to Jersey. <laughs> and like, it puts it all in perspective. Yep, yep. And then you're right. those fishless days in California where at least you had nice weather. Mm. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Oliver, I've been thinking about something you said. I you felt know, like you dropped the clue. Shitty weather. <laughs> I, I, I felt like you dropped the clue on the stream the other night on Bass U. Really? For big baits. I feel I feel like you were trying to say something. So you were talking about the OG Depths 250. Yeah. And then the American versions that came here that yeah. did not have feathered trebles. Mm -hmm. You said it's a blessing potentially and a curse at the same time. You felt like those feathered trebles maybe produced more strikes, but less hookups. Did I hear that right? Can uh, you walk me through that one more time? You heard it partially, right? I, I really didn't feel like the feathers had any uh, negative effect on hookup percentage or landing percentage. If anything, I felt like they increased it. Oh, because that gave them a target. All right, so here's a question for you. I don't know. You just, but I watched most of those bites. I literally watched those fish. Yeah, bites. yeah. Yeah, I've seen my bites. With Travis, I picked up a, a Gancraft, you know, 230. We were down in Alabama. The, the pre-spawn females were off a little drop in about six to eight foot. There were some bucks and big, a few big females. Dude, first 
I saw a couple cruisers. I chucked it to the bank. I watched them follow the bait. Every single fish I saw, I had interest in the fish, right? And so Travis was talking on the phone and he let me have the front of the boat. So I got my parallel cast to the drop where I knew the bigger females were. I chucked that ganny out there. I threw a little few hitches in the reel just to know, like do a little sauce. Couldn't see the fish. But as soon as I did that little spin and that bait did that, man, I saw her eat. And it was about a six pounder. It was a super special, incredible moment for me to do it on camera. I've never done it on camera. I've caught fish before, but on camera. So I, the question I've got for you, all of the domestic baits that I buy now here in the States, if I'm not shopping on eBay, none of them have feathered trebles. So I'm a fly tire, but, but I, like I did 10 years of time fly this little shaky jig. Where am I tied up that little hackle on the front there? Dude, I can make my shit. So I got a bunch of swim bait hooks. I've done my research on what to put on what bait. So I, here's what I'm thinking. So like there's a couple baits that, you know, everybody's talking about for consistent bites that, you know, river to sea, right? S waiver 168. What if I took some treble hooks, put a few feathers on those trebles? Would that help me? And I think I'd be the only one in America, maybe not after tonight, but <laughs> if, if I ran out tomorrow in Philly and start throwing it, I might get a follow or two or more. I'm thinking about doing that. Is that a waste of time? Should I do it? Man, uh, you know, you got to live your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I got nothing but time because I ain't going fishing for the next couple of weeks. It's too freaking cold. <laughs> I, you know, I will say you will have to be careful that that feather doesn't uh, affect the, the swim in a negative way. Just like you. True, true, true. Jerk bait. It's right. Gonna, the way it swims mm, interesting so that's what that was the other question right are those baits designed like was the depths 250 designed originally to have a feathered treble here's the thing man like these baits are designed by somebody with some kind of concept in their minds sure um, right now most of the baits that i love fishing i fish in ways that they were not designed to be fished okay interesting hmm. so use that like kind of as a just a foundation right on what that thing can do on your own yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna try it look i can put a lot of different materials on a hook right i've got a decade worth of flying tie and shit down here it's i'm Sick. putting it to use in bass ways i've tied up you know full full fur and feathered chatter baits that just sit, swim sick there's no plastic trailer on the back they're stupid looking but they look fucking awesome and they catch fish i don't show them i've never showed them on this stream i'm not going to show them on this stream but I'm just telling you. So I got, I got, I got this. You got my gears turning, bro. <laughs> you got my gears turning. You got me jazzed up, bro. I'm, Damn. I'm a mad scientist. I, I'm in the bass he lab. Is. This is the bass lab, bro. I make shit down here. That's badass. Yeah. yeah no th idea. There's, there's very few things that can beat a big bass eating a big ass bait. There's no question about it, dude. It gets me so fired up. I, I literally, so let me tell you my story about how I got into big bait. So there's there's a there's a guy, Austin Neary, from Dreamcatchers Fishing down in Carolina. He used to live on my street. He was a little bass head. You know, he told a funny story. He'd come to my basement. I'd give him free lures. That was the only thing going on. But I knew his dad really well. He was in the junior club. And so the dude gets recruited to go play baseball in Western Carolina, gets hurt. His freshman and sophomore year loses his scholarship and literally wants to fucking jump off a bridge. I'm telling you, the dude did not want to be on the planet. He was going to the show Dang. to play in the major leagues. I, the boy was depressed. Talk to him, text with him. You know, I'm like, dude, I just saw a freaking DVD that made my brain explode. <laughs> Southern fucking trout eaters. Oliver, I watched it over and over and over again, I, I was like out of my mind going, I thought this was only for the West Coast. <laughs> I, I have a lake house on a Western Maryland lake, and I'm going to make a statement right now, and I'm going to try to do it. I only wish you were here in the spring. I want to break the Maryland state record with Brian the Carpenter on my lake. And if Oliver, you could come out, I'd, I'd, you'd have to talk. I, if you're not busy, I'll make a business arrangement with you to try to do it. I would. I dare I say I would pay to see you fish the lake, but I would because I just want to know. Uh, so I, I saw this DVD and I said, man, I'm going to buy some swim baits and I run a business. So I don't have the time to, to do what I really want to do in fishing. 
And I've had this dream, this big, vast dream in my brain to go and commit for a full week during a full moon during the spawn to catch a double digit fish in Maryland, mm -hmm. in Maryland. And they live there. I like it, it. Is, it is a trout lake because mm -hmm. trout get stocked there. It's a dammed lake. It has a dam, very deep water, average depth, 27 foot, ultra clear, high mountain reservoir. So not a southern trout eater fishery, but not a northern trout eater fishery right here in freaking Maryland. Yeah, and man. I want to take up big baits and see what happens. I might know a guy. I love it. All right, cool, man. You'll catch him. Cool, cool. I might be floating around the East Coast a little bit in 2021. Oh, snap. All right. I want to so live tomorrow might want to tune into ike live tomorrow <laughs> uh oh i'm gonna man all right so that's the dream and then i'm gonna tell you my first experience going for a tournament i want to employ a swim bait it blew my freaking mind right here in the east coast down south tournament practice day friday i took a gancraft after i fished it with austin from dream catchers fishing in the big bass tour and he caught a six and change we thought we won the boat I had like a whopper plopper fish that was five and change a $300 fish. His fish ended up being a thousand dollar fish. We didn't win, but it was one of the top seven fish caught that weekend. And it was on a Gancraft trout color. It's Smith mountain Lake that doesn't have trout. So I go, I cracked one of his gannies. I go, I'll buy it from you since I cracked it. I repaired it and took it down to this Carolina Lake. And I go, I'm going to throw it. This is practice. I don't give a shit. It's high sun. It's a light chop. Not the kind of conditions we maybe think that would be great for a big bait. I go to the dam. I go to the first pocket. There's some gr shoreline grass. I go, maybe there's a spawner here. Start chucking around, see if I get a fo No follows. This is the first 10 minutes. <laughs> first covered boathouse. There are no boats in this. It's a double-sided boathouse, two slips. Chuck it right down the center. I have a six. Follow it to the boat. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to dr draw a strike. I'm just trying to locate big bass. Then the next slip, about a four comes out and looks at it. I'm like, holy hey, fuck. Hey, hey, Eric. Yeah. That's a that's a wonderful, unbelievable story. No, no, I'm not done. But when I'm throwing the 2.8 Kitech on like an eighth ounce uh, head. Yeah. yeah. And really moving. All right. Dude, you're, you're a buzzkill, man. You're killing me, man. <laughs> so, so, dude, I call up my partner. And I, I've got like maybe 15 fish to follow. I put waypoints on them. One, one big girl was on a bed. I go, and, and finally he shows up. He goes, that's bullshit, dude. You're lying. I go, it's a trout-colored swim bait, dude. It's a giant five-ounce swim bait. I can't tell you. Look, you have to come. So he drops his boat in the water, comes to me. We're in a cut, still by the dam. It has one of the biggest boat docks on the turn of this cut, and it has a boat in the boathouse, giant boat. I go, this is the best dock in this cut. I, I think a big one lives under there. Watch this. He goes, well, let me see how it swims. I, all right, man. So I tossed it towards the boat engine. I didn't want to crack my swim bait. So it was a shitty cast. So I'm just kind of like rolling it. I'm trying to like do some hitches. And then I'm looking for my next cast. And he goes, oh, my God, there's like an eight pounder following it, dude. And the fish was charging. I pulled the bait out of the water. I'm like, man, I'm done, dude. I did chuck it by a beaver hut and accidentally caught a four. The next day, we catch big fish and come in second. Wow! On the fish I located, that's dope. you know what make that that story even better. Mm. What's if that? You, I thought you were gonna say you cast it by a beaver hut and actually fucking snagged a beaver with that big. <laughs> <bait. Dude, laughs> funny you say that. So, Eric, why are you telling that story? This is Clint. Clint is Clint. Oliver's camera guy on the. Clint, you dude, unbelievable work. Appreciate it. So you you knew who he was talking about? Yeah. So Austin Neary lives 15 minutes from my house. Damn. I go to Dreamcatcher's Fishing Supply like literally every week. They get all my business and like depth two fifty what craft the eye slide all that stuff. Like I've watched Austin Neary. He went to my college. I graduated from the same college. Me and Austin. No freaking way. In college, yeah, pretty small world there. So Lake dude, you you're blowing my mind, man. Yeah. I can't even believe that. I just heard. I just heard all the stories. You know, oh, I had, what? no way. You got to talk to him about what was her name? Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, I just had. I just had. Oh. Austin, I just interviewed. Free. I, 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 dislocated hips. <laughs> this was a conversation earlier. We'll get into that later, Travis. I'll tell you later. 
Yeah, no, I'm just saying I just interviewed Austin Neary for the Smallmouth Crush podcast, the top 52 smallmouth bass anglers in the country. And we kind of reminisced or before the show, Eric, because you guys were actually Eric and, and Austin were neighbors. Like they lived, yeah. they lived on the same street. Yeah. As 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 Eric. Oliver, I'm um, gonna show you the Gancraft and show you the actual like snag where I freaking did the little repair on it, man. I used April, it April 7th. April 7th. I'm heading down there to fish with Austin. And we're gonna oh I told him throw some awesome. big ass swim baits. That's awesome, man. I'm trying not to hook myself. You're getting stuff out of my swim bait basket of joy. Mm. Dang, man. This thing is like in there. What Hold on. on. Can we talk about that 2.8 <laughs> high tech while he's gone? So, you guys, so when I'm throwing the swim bait. What are you talking about? A 2.8 high tech? Dude. With Oliver Nye on the show? Because I want to. <laughs> what is wrong with you, dude? It's in there pulling out contact 2.8. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Save it for your fucking smallmouth streams. Are you kidding me? Oliver, can you see this on screen? Go ahead, do it. Can you see it? He's coming, he's coming dude. He had to, uh, he had to uh, get it pull his box out. Ah, uh, Oliver, can it you did. see that little? Can you see that little mark right there on the screen? Can you go full screen, that Travis? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll Come do on, it. do some produce. <laughs> Jesus, can you see that little gray spot right there on the actual hinge? I mean, on the on the. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Right, right there. It's gray. Where my finger is right here. Yep. Okay, so I cracked that on a dock, and I put this product called Sugru. Have you ever heard of it? Nah. It's moldable glue, so it's flexible and soft, but it's hard enough where it, it still has the correct swim. So this is the bait that I threw, bro. That's dope. That's a great bait. Yeah, it is, man. It is, man. It is. And I and I heard you talking about the Hinkle, bro. They make great uh, curry too, by the way. Gancraft does. Tell me about the Hinkle. Should I put this in the game more often? You should definitely have that tied on. Okay. A lot. All right. And I got one last question. I don't hear you talk about rat baits much. Is hold that on. before we get to the rat or you don't like? Listen, well, hold up. Before we get to the rat, what was that called? The Hinkle? What is it? This is a Hinkle Shad, bro. Hinkle truck. What size? Andrew Hinkle. What the size? Thing is, this is a mega, man. He only makes one. I mean, it's one, the Hinkle it's, Hinkle Shad. That's it. Andrew Hinkle. That's it. He only makes one size. Right. Oliver, you make different hooks on that? Stock hooks? What? What are you doing with that Hinkle? This this Hinkle comes with the hooks. He puts ST41 uh, owners on it. I take those things right off and replace them with ST36s or quads. See, I heard you talk about that, man. You like that thinner diameter hook, and you're not afraid to throw that, right? Man, I, it's done me really well. Yeah, that was the other thing that really got my attention. I was taking notes and paying attention, and uh, that surprised me because, to me, it makes sense. These are treble hook baits, and if you've got the right rod, you get better penetration, correct? The whole you got to have the right system. Yeah, so it's it's not just the hook. It's the rod, line. It's everything. Everything, man. Most importantly, it's the human holding it all. Uh, dude, that's why you got to watch your vids, man, because you got to get educated, bros. Smart ones watch the vids. So, so the rat baits. I did ask a question about the rat baits. Tell me wh why those. I mean, it didn't come up on the stream. I asked about it, but I, you know, it didn't get there because I, I had already got one of my questions asked. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's a, a funny story about the rat uh, the that makes the triple trout. His brand is 22nd Century Swim Baits. Yeah, Nizuma. Yep, yep. So he he stopped making the Nizuma years and years ago. He used to sit on the shelf at Performance Tackle, uh, retailed for $44.99. Or wow. Nobody would buy it. Wow. Okay, and he made three or four sizes and kept looking at this thing all the time in his garage when I was BS, like we are here at, at Brian's house. And I was like, yo, I don't care what you want me to pay for these things. Like, you need to make me like 10 of them. Oh, yeah. wow. And they're a pain in the ass and blah, blah, blah. And the ears are a pain in the butt and the mold. And I was like, dude, I don't want to hear it. Like, how much? And he was like, all right, 75 bucks. I'm like, boom, here's 750. Oh, let me get. So I started fishing them, cracking fish at home on that extra large Nizuma rat. That's a big bait. 
Yeah, and it is a fun bait, man. When when a when a bass hits a rat style bait, they hit it like extra hard. It's Dude, like man. genetically exposed to like I've got to hit this thing with what I got. Hatred. Oh, I know it, man. So, I've thrown them, caught them on it. Yeah, that's that's kind of a funny story um of how thing came back into production. Not a lot of people know because like I was actually flipping them to my friends for like 175. Sure. Because <laughs> you know. Up. Make the plays, bro. You got to hustle, man. You came from humble make beginnings, money. man. Back to, to existence, and uh, guys are catching fish on. It's a great bait. Uh, you know, Jerry made a lot of great rats. Those are yeah, okay. Successes. Um, so the rat was totally, from what I knew, a, a West Coast thing. But I mean, it's got universal appeal. So obviously, uh, guys all over the country were, were starting to pick that pick up on that and i mean it's kind of a relatively easy bait to to make and design and in in, for a hobbyist so right, hence right. your 800 different rat you know configurations yep. available these days but yep. the reason oh, hell yeah it was because there seemed to be a threshold on how big of a large amount i could catch on mm, interesting never broke double digits uh, oh wow that's fascinating so i put it down huh yeah that simple yeah like you want you had your goal i had mine and yeah right on i was like yeah i'm not gonna waste my time right on man right on three to eight pounders were yeah plenty eight pounders on the rats i'll take eight pounders. a blast obviously and eight pounder is a great great fish but not when you have a potential to catch a much bigger fish yeah for sure fascinating man Man, that's good stuff, man. I just had to ask the questions right out of here. I was so stoked, man. Sorry for taking over the stream, BTC. No, no, it's all good, man. Uh, you're up, bro. You're that, up. That's what you're good for, Eric. I mean, we try to make some good, man. That's you, got Oliver, you, got, you got Oliver Nye on the show, bro. You I know. We got Oliver, and everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to get, get, get another tour of the Uber, fucking whatever that is out there on your, on your street. Man, I don't get it, people. Yeah, that's not tonight. They keep asking about the Uber. The Cougar Uber. Cougar Uber. Yeah. Cougar Uber, Let's man. take a place for that, guys. All right? <laughs> ah! Still working on that? What's that? The trails are trail. Your, your bait. No, we're done. It's a four, four and a half inches? Smaller than that. It's a little micro jerk bait? Yeah, yeah. real micro <laughs> jerk bait. Ah! I'm sorry. Back to you. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man is ike after hours gonna be like this dude it used to oh man i hope not man oliver would you, would you throw that crankbait oliver back back, back did <laughs> i'd say nothing i'd say nothing we got corporate <laughs> corporate man corporate sucks dick trying to, trying to cancel travel man i don't know damn i recorded damn. i recorded multiple Cuss words and uh, some some sketchy stuff on the last Ike Live I heard. Oh, so you tell me, BTC. Oh no, it was bad. You got that list handy? Let's go through that. <laughs> no, <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> not touching it. Yeah, no, I'm not repeating that shit. Yeah, it got bad. It got bad. It was good. <laughs> but we will have Dave tomorrow, man. That, oh shit! That's really the the the, the element. The mm. whatever. Anyhow, what else you got, bud? Yeah, so Oliver, you travel all over the country. You're fishing big swim baits. You're catching big bass. You ever look up at the sky and see something like crazy up there? Oh, hmm. hmm. I saw a me? Delaware the other day. Wow. You saw what? Condom above head height. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Coney Island, what? Coney Island. That's <laughs> awesome, man. Way up in the tree, up in the high water mark. Yeah. Damn. Well, that's cool. I was hoping, I was, I'm talking like, you know. Aliens, UFOs, nah. nothing. He's got nothing. Nah, no, I mean, don't disrespect the condom. I mean, you know, <laughs> a lot of energy involved in that. That's that's statement. right. That's right, man. Don't disrespect. Do you, so, how do you think it got there? Did you guys, when you walk me through it? So you're you're throwing a uh, you're you're fishing along, and you just look up, and who sees it first? Actually, Clint did. The Eagle Eye Clint. Cameraman was getting B-roll of the cone. And, and again, folks, this is Clint. Clint, where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. It's Clint from North Carolina. Yep. 
nice. he's, been known, he's been known to dislocate hips. Dislocate <laughs> the, hip, the hips keep of the <laughs> younger generation. Keep keep your yeah. little people yeah. away from them. But legal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Legal. Very legal. <laughs> Extremely six, legal. Six years older than me. Uh, six years uh, older, but four feet shorter. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Gotcha. Wow. Oh my goodness. Travis will tell you later. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we'll send pics. Respect to Clint. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Clint sees the uh up there just hanging. At like 2 30 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, man. Coney out whitefish. Jeez. Yeah, so what was the history behind that? You know? If you could I think it honestly, okay. Uh, if, you want to hear my story? Yes. Go like ahead. what I what I think would happen. So it was on the Delaware, right? Was it up the Schuylkill or were we talking? Yeah, I think it would have been. It was up the Schuylkill. Okay. Schuylkill. So that kind of narrows things down for me. Yeah. There is a, a couple parking lots up there, some dirt, dirt paved mm-hmm. parking areas just off of the main drag. Mm-hmm. And uh to my knowledge, um, you know, this is a long time ago, guys, you know, three, four years ago. <laughs> it was a well known uh, area for prostitutes. Ooh. Hell yeah. So that could be the situation at hand right there. Um, I don't know for sure. I just, I hear stories. What's the best time to go there, Trav? <laughs> well, I mean, if you're smart, broad daylight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? Don't, broad daylight. I yeah, got you it. don't go down there after dark. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. I got you, man. All right. <laughs> uh, well, where th- do we go from here? What if that uh, the heck, there you go. had actually made its way into the Delaware River? Okay. Pretty sure, dude, because they came from the tide was coming in Philadelphia into some of the ponds. Some of those ponds had a pipe that led into that tidal water. Now we have snakeheads. You ever catch one? No. I'm what? Not, man, I want that. In my Come mind. on, dude. Yeah. Ah, you're here. Best, to- one of the best eating freshwater fish out there. That's what I heard. Dude, they're savage. Yeah, they have man. a head on I'm them, all man. About that. It's fun. It's fun when you're targeting them. It's not fun when you're working a pad field with a frog and you think in a tournament and you're looking for your fifth bass and it goes. Yeah, I hear that. Not cool. I hear that. But they are a beast of a fish, man. Yeah, if anyone's looking to target them on tidal water, uh, my advice is they like high sun. They'll get up in the water column. They'll kind of just chill by the docks. Low tide's the best, uh, but you'll see them at high tide as well. But low tide and high sun, and they'll basically just kind of uh, they'll just hang out. They're just sunning themselves, basically. Dude, they're weird, man. They'll just, like, stare at shit. Really weird. You know, um, what's that one? Uh, Spawny Cove on the Chessie. Um, shit, I can't think of it, Travis. We don't need to name it. Okay. But I was in there one time, dude. They're just staring at the at the at, at the at the pole. At the pole, yes. Staring so out. I so they're actually sneaky. They're always hunting, and there's a lot of bluegill and brim in there. And, and what they're doing is, they're gonna turn on that. As soon like like their 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 whole deal is to just sit super still. So and what, I have I have a marina that I can walk. So so at low tide I I have a marina that I can actually walk on the bank around the docks. Yeah. And I'll take a I'll take like a big. A lot of times I use that big Magnum uh, Z Man head, and I'll put a big TRD on it. You know, just because that's what I have <clears throat> on a bait caster, just tie it direct with it's braid. Big, and then you're talking about a Ned rig. No, a, a giant TRD on these snakeheads. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I, Go ahead, your story. <laughs> and I'll see the snakehead looking at the at the pole, and I'll throw that Ned rig, and I'll stop the spool right before it hits the water. And so it's right, it's, I'm not letting it fall. I'm just, and I'm just swimming it real quick past that snakehead within. Instantly, he turns fast as you can, and the fight's on, dude. That's I catch. I probably so I keep my boat there. Uh, so after a guy trip, pretty much every day, I'm addicted to it. I'll go and try to catch some of those uh, snakehead that are sunning themselves. So here I am with a bait caster, a giant or a big TRD, 
and my net and I, I hook them and I catch two or three, throw them in the freaking cooler and bring them home and clean them up every day. Hey, how, how do they compare to walleye? They got to be better. Walleye overrated. Ah. Uh, walleye's pretty good. Um, I like the thought that I'm eating a walleye a lot better than a snakehead. So that has a lot to do with it. Like, they're they're both good. Snakehead's going to be a little sweeter mm. tasting. But but you're mad at them because they're invasive. I, it just is nasty. They're, they're they're gross looking, dude. They back in Wisconsin we have dogfish, which is very similar to a snakehead as far as profile and what they look like. Dogfish both, lawyers, whatever you want to call them. Both in. Yeah, both in. Show them some respect, dude. They've been around for a million years. Okay, well, I'm down. same same deal. What is theirs? Gas is a freshwater drum. Yeah, it's so yeah. Right, dude. They they, yeah, they, they where you're from. The they've been around a while, dude. Saying. Oh, well, go ahead. I caught one sight fishing with Travis. That was pretty cool. A Travis bowfin. turned me on to it. Man, it was a bowfin. Yeah. That was awesome. Up north, they, those bowfin do the same thing as a snakehead. They'll just sit there and chill. And I saw one. I go, Eric, throw that freaking jig in there. <laughs> that was awesome. Boom. That was cool. Bowfin are actually a lot more. I think bowfin are prettier as far as they have like that that purple glow to them. Can you uh, eat a bowfin? Uh, not really. No. So snakehead is a completely different eating fish. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? It's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> really, really hot one. Well, how about that? Pretty girl. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I think snakeheads are way more. Um, they they've got a way better uh, okay. pattern to them. Both in, yes. Yeah. So anyhow, let's move on. Well, where do you want to go from here? I don't know. I mean, we got any good comments, dude? What's up? We do. I I've been. What are you? Somebody says somebody should. Oh, uh, shit. I can't say. Man, that. I want to get my swim bait box and keep talking swim baits. I know why. Yeah, you guys, listen. Here's saying, the deal. You this is a special opportunity for Eric. Yeah. Talk to Oliver, dude. Big going- baits and shit. Eric, just fucking talk about them. Get it out of your fucking system. I got to go up in my truck and get my box, man. I mean, hell. This is to break it out on Maryland. So, 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 dude, man. So, you know. Listening to you, it's like apex predators are just geared to eat the biggest bait in the lake. Right. They're the apex predator in their body of water. That's right. Like and the- so it, it 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 got in my brain. BTC, did you hear this on the stream? Big baits in Oliver's mind are seven inches or bigger. Uh, that's what she said. More like eight. That's what she uh, see. I think now you're up in it, right? You said minimum seven, uh, but but eight makes sense, I mean, right? When you so, get <laughs> when you get to that eight inch or bigger, you're packing some meat, bro. That's all I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Boom. Oh, I know, man. And <laughs> statistics show there's very few people that are, that that have that eight inch or bigger in their tackle box. Uh huh. Back to the swim bait part. <laughs> so you were talking about the one bait that you were throwing that was just, it was so big that it gave the fish leverage. So there was this tipping point yep. with with the size of a bait. So what yep. is the sweet spot if I'm going to Florida and I'm going in February? I hope BTC could come or or go at another time with me. And we can go explore. And and my goal is a double digit bass this right. year, 2021. Um, and I've got the gear, I've made the investment, I spent some time with the baits. I'm no expert. I've watched some vids, I've I've thrown it when it wasn't popular. People are laughing at me. Like the first day that I threw a Gancraft 230 with Austin, that was my first day I threw it. I had I had big baits ready to go. He cast it out. And it landed by that dock. And I'm going, that's ridiculous. That It made such a splash. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? It's it, like we're taught to be quiet with our presentations. You know, you, when you're pitching your jig, make sure it only dimples the water. Uh-uh. This was so ridiculous and so counterintuitive. But when I saw that first big bite, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, man. 
we caught it on video and it was derby day we caught a few smaller fish in practice i focused on throwing the big giant plopper to get the money fish so we could cash some checks which we did on the plopper that was my job in the back and then at about 11 o'clock high sun zero wind exactly what you described we're going into a pocket by the dam he goes dude <laughs> it's about to go down i go yeah man i go no i think i said yeah it's about to go down in here man he goes yeah man big mama's living by that black triton under that floating dock dude he flicks that k craft 230 by it man about 10 feet from the boat he goes oh my god it's a giant <laughs> and he crouches down and he does this he does this quick quick and the bait goes, quick, quick. And I see this bass go lazy, like, ah. And it just opened its mouth and ate the back hook. And, he, and it all hell broke loose, dude. I jumped and he goes, get the net. <laughs> you know, that fish, literally, man, I mean, he just winched it. He winched it, dude. And I put it in the net. And literally, we thought we won the Triton. So, and I, after that day, I was hooked. I was sold. I saw it. I said, you're giving me a Gancraft because we're not here to cash. $300 checks. It's on day two. I literally know I had a double digit follow me at Smith Mount Lake. It made my knees fucking buckle, dude. Yeah, man. I couldn't trigger the bite. Didn't know how to do it. I was just too inexperienced with it. Even if I did, I might not have triggered the bite. That's the one thing. So I interviewed Austin, who spent a lot of time with big baits. And I said, okay, dude, out of 30 follows, how many fish can you get to commit? Now, I want to ask you, without telling you what his answer was, I'll ask you the same question. 30 followers that you see have an interest are tracking your bait. You've made visual contact with your eyeballs. You are at the expert category. How many bass can you get triggered a bite? You know, those are a lot of ifs, right? I know. I know. If, if you got me the right conditions, I could probably catch all 30 of them. That's crazy. I think I can. Wow. That's a, that's one but you give me the wrong condition. I, I could also yeah. not catch a single one of them. That's fascinating. Okay, so fair enough. Fair I, enough. I got confidence where I, I feel like I can get a follower to eat. That's wild, man. That's wild. It all comes through experience and learning through failure that you're talking about. I would agree. I would agree. So the second big bass trip we did was at Lake Norman. And it was going to be a wolf pack opportunity. So this was the big bass tour, fishing for a bass boat. We go out and practice. I have my Nez Rat medium. The medium, yeah, it's medium. A yellow belly in leopard. It's not a wake rat. It's a, it's a, it's not the wake. Or maybe it is the wake. No, it wasn't a wake. I could get it to go subsurface. I think I caught the winning spot in practice. Why did I have hooks on it? I have no idea. <laughs> um, but uh, we made a move mid tournament. You can pull your boat out of the water and you can move around the lake. So we went to the dam area because we were. Not, it was not happening where we were practicing. I missed several big fish that day on the rat. Um, he was making super crazy good casts to get his rat to land softly. He's thrown this little goofy rat out of Carolina that had this sexy shimmer. I'm sticking with the Nez rat. They wanted the Nez rat, not his sexy rat. It was driving him wild. So we pull the boat, move locations. We go to the first area. There's a giant wolf pack. We can't trigger him. Later in the day, literally the sun is hitting the water you know how you get that reflection you can't see much he's in the front there's a sheen on the water he gets a big giant spot to explode on his rat i'm looking at the spot on it's only like two foot of water he's got the rat pinned to the bottom i'm like austin set the hook set the hook literally he missed the fish he took his rod and reel and tossed the whole thing as far as he can throw it, throw it. i'm like, I'm like austin you're going to need that fucking rod, man. So I cast and I fucking grabbed this line with my rat. And we brought it back in. We kept fishing. Later in the day, he sees a giant in a fucking pine tree. He makes the perfect cast, but misses it by like a half inch and hangs his treble on the wood. Literally, at this point, he fucking throws the whole combustion into the tree. We got we to go, you got to have that rod, dude. He goes, fuck that rod, man. Goes up, takes the reel off, cuts the line, snaps the rod over his knee, and tosses the whole shit in the woods. I'm like, this is crazy, man. My man's got some fire, bro. That was my big bass dream down the drain at Lake Norman on a Nazuma rat. Who is he? Austin Neary, man. Dream catcher's fishing, bro. 
right, I'm a big fan already. <laughs> you would love the heat. Love listen, the listen, guys. He is. I just I spent. We had him on the live last year. It's the first time I actually. Well, I spoke with. You don't remember this, Eric, but we were up on Oneida Lake last year at a hotel, and we talked to Austin for a little bit. And then we had him in the live, and I was blown away by this dude. <laughs> and then I had him on the yeah. podcast last yeah yesterday. And shit, dude, that guy's like, like between, like here's my favorite people in fishing. Eric, I got like four of them. Yeah, Epic Eric, Eric, Epic Eric <laughs> BTC, yeah, and. <laughs> Like Oliver Austin. and I and, and Austin. Oliver and, 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 and fucking Austin. And that's it. And dude, the dude's special. The guy is special. Dude, he is. There's no question. Oliver, all right, man. I got to just take one second of your time, man. So my buddy, Alan Hanley, we tournament fished. This is my first tournament fishing partner. He's a goldsmith by trade. We had a great run early like man i can't even remember dude this is on the potomac dude like you know cash some checks together fish some local club derby shit nothing big dude like yeah. small fry shit but like i had my bass tracker 16 tf fiberglass after i sold my aluminum bass tracker and you know like thinking i was big shit right so anyway he gets out of bass fishing i get out of bass fishing raise a family run a business start some businesses Get back into bass fishing. The dude loses every single penny he ever owned in a restaurant business during a, during a recession. Damn. But the guy still loves bass fishing. So I get him ignited again. We go on a few trips together, man. And I go, Alan, I want you to design my ultimate rat. But I want a tournament rat. Not a big rat, a tournament rat. So he goes to thinking. I tell him the components I want. Rotating hook hangers. I want a waking rat that, well, not a waking rat, a diving rat that I can wait depending upon, wake depending upon the rod position, right? Yeah. I want the little screw lock keeper on the back for the tail, you know? But I said, I want a specific style rattle. I'm not going to tell you what the rattle is, but he takes it next level. He not only does a rattle chamber, but he does a couple other little sauciness to it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you hear the bait. I don't know if this will come through, but this is the prototype. Not the original OG prototype. I told him when you make the bait, do a template because I'm going to fish the bait. So he makes the first rat, comes to my little local pond that gets the shit kicked out of it every day. People fish it every day, every day. It's 300 yards from my house. It's a pond I fished as a little kid. It was a farm pond that I had to sneak on. Now there's a bunch of houses around it. It gets the shit kicked out of it. But there are big bass in there, like, you know, five, five pounders, probably the biggest that lives in there. Five and a half, maybe a six. It won't support anything bigger. And it's only got bass and bluegill. So you know how productive of just only bass and bluegill pond could be. Yeah. Taking this rat out. And, and there's a video on my IG that I've got. And I, I'm like, you know, I'm like testing the lure. I'm doing a little talking to the, you know, it's just a little Instagram video, man. It's not like a YouTube video or nothing like that. I'm no big YouTuber, right? So I'm like, I'm talking about the rat. I'm talking about the rattles that he's made. I'm, this is all setting up, right? There's some milfoil in this pond too, right? And so I chuck it, I chuck it by the milfoil and I'm reeling, I'm waking it, you know? And then I'm like, and then I pause it by like a little house of milfoil where the bass should be living, right? It's like three clumps of milfoil. And he's got to be in the middle, I'm thinking, right? So I pause that rat. Dude, as soon as I went to pull that fucking rat again to engage the reel, he fucking cracks it, man. I'm laughing like a fucking idiot, dude. And oh. literally catch one of the biggest fish that lives in this pond, like within the first 10 minutes of throwing the bait. And then we test other prototypes. Every time I go to a pond with him, I catch a bass on the newer, different prototype. But none swim like the original. I can burn the rat. The original rat on a crank down, and that rat will do this. Uh, it'll hunt and kick out and come back to center and kick out. It, if I really overpower it, like I'm throwing on a 7 to 1. So I can, I got this crank down rat. I got this wake rat. And I got this little. This is the size. I wish I had something to compare hey, Eric, it to. Eric, you got 30 seconds. All right, man. <laughs> that thing, Eric. Here it is, man. Check it out. Can you hear it? No, I can't. All right, let me see if you can hear the route. It's, it's hear just fucking rattling, you guys. Come on. All right, let's shut this fucker down. Hey, hey, dude. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good, man. That's cool. 
Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. But look, I'm gonna say one little thing. There, are, there, there's a couple little ruby beads in here, dude. That when the body clicks, they hit the ruby beads, man. So you got a clack, a rattle in, and a clacker out. So comments coming in. Eric's going. Drop out. the fucking mic, man. I'm out, Travis. Listen, Oliver, I loved meeting you. You have a good evening. My daughter's in from California. I'm gonna go spend some family time, Travis. Thanks, as always, for having me on the show. You guys have a great night. BTC, I fucking love you, Oliver. I hope I get to fish with you on the East Coast, bro. We'll be talking. Peace out, everybody. And <laughs> my dude was pumped. Uh, that was amazing, Travis. Oh, man. <laughs> Can we like, cut that in and save it for tomorrow? Dude, I wish, man. I'm kind of in shock. Yeah. Be, uh, uh, we got... Alex, the intern, you're gonna, yeah, timestamp that one. <laughs> wow, that's gold. Yeah, he's awesome, right? That was sick. Yeah, that's yeah. Oliver's first introduction to Epic Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where did I? I didn't offend him, did I? Probably, but that's par for the course. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. Dude, it was he is, basically basically you set him up. For that amazing outro. Yes. It was dynamite, dude. It really was. <laughs> the comments are lighting up. They like that. Yeah, that was the best uh, Epic Eric exit <laughs> I've seen on the fucking show. It was, dude. It was fucking fantastic. Almost like... It was the best uh, one I've seen. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like like Houdini, and he was out. The only one I've seen. Yeah. Jeez. And he went out with so much juice. I'm sorry. No, I get it, dude. I get, I get, I get worked up over big baits. I do. I just don't have the experience like you guys. So it's hard when you don't have that experience to get that excitement. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like if dude, you don't have that experience, Travis, you can't match Eric's excitement. Well, on a few things. On anything. Oh, well, there's one thing, but we won't talk about it. What's, What's that? that? <laughs> Where are you matching? Excitement, dude. That dude's that dude's he's epic Eric, dude. He's that he, different level. Yes. He's shaking <laughs> Steve Hardy goes, uh Jimmy's pissed. Clint right here said Clint, who's been known to snap snap hips. Yeah. Breaking hips and ripping lips, baby. Yeah. I said, <laughs> what'd you say, Eric? Did? Uh, I don't even remember Eric's line now. <laughs> breaking ass and eating ass. Yeah, breaking ass and eating ass. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, bro, I, I, Take listen, it, it, turn it over to the cameraman again. Clint, <laughs> right? Clint. Clint, what's up? Clint, I don't know you that well, but I would have to say on a scale of one to ten, <laughs> ten being the highest. Yeah. That rubber you saw was probably yours. <laughs> uh if only I if only I used protection, man. I just fucking did. How was that a one to ten scale? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Are you on the white claws again, bro? Are you on the claws? I'm on the vodka. Ah uh, vodka uh, red claws? <laughs> claws. Oh, anything goes, man. No, I appreciate you guys waiting. We had to get through a bunch of stuff, and I didn't expect it to go that long tonight. But it was a uh, uh, yeah. Thank, thank Oliver for hanging out, dude. Yeah, He's dude. Thank you, Mike's bro. Mark. No, you made Eric's night. You made Eric's exit. You made Thanks. yeah. In my night, like I, I love hearing that energy, man. That's dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. But after you know, we've been streaming now for almost three hours. Oh, I feel you. You know where I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they are right. a couple, dude. Yeah. You ever see The Odd Couple? No, I have not, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? You don't know The Odd Couple? No. Don't introduce me to some other another crazy shit, dude, because... No. Uh, you introduced me to the Tom and Jerry cartoon, and that's enough. <laughs> Dick Moe or whatever his name is, screw that. Yeah, no, nah, <laughs> Dickie Moe. Trust me, I'm sending you... The, I'm photoshopping you and Epic Eric on The Odd Couple, and it's coming. Uh-huh. Yeah, later tonight when I'm drunk and done whatever other bullshit I'll probably be up to. <laughs> You're third on the list. There you go. No. There you go. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks for having us on, brother. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's the juice. You talk about it? Nah, they ain't ready. They ain't ready. They ain't ready. But it's right in your wheelhouse. Travis. I got one. You're not throwing it like that. Yeah, let's keep that, keep them heads down low. DL. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I 
get my head down low one time. <laughs> oh, shit. It's, I need a cameraman like that. It's the deal. You guys, Yadi? Uh, yeah, it's time. Dave. All right, guys, listen, thanks. Oliver, a pleasure. Dave. I hope you enjoy your time here. I already the, uh, On the East Coast. It's all about the company, not the weather <laughs> or the freaking terrible fishing. That's right. BTC, Dirty Cameraman. Where's Dirty? We call him Dirty. Dirty, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, no best dreams. Here it is. That's Let's it. go. All, All right, time. guys. We out. Yeah. See you. All right. Awesome, awesome live. I hope Eric's not mad. Man, 2020, I only pissed one guy off. 2021, we're seven days in. And I got two gone. I feel lonely. I gotta bring uh I gotta bring Alex in, bro. How'd it go tonight, dude? Dude, it was a good stream. A lot of good stuff. We'll have a lot of good clips. Derek was, I think he was encouraging people to make a lot of poor financial decisions. He had some good stuff <laughs> flying across that screen. He did, man. Seriously, good. I mean, a lot of great baits. You know, Beast Coast makes a great bait, whether it be that magic flick, whether it be these jig trailers. And I want to circle back real quick to the people that are still watching. That wasn't a joke. This wasn't a joke. We'll leave it at that, and it it's maybe for another time. Yeah. Um, a good buddy of mine, Kent, from upstate New York, kind of keyed me in to doing this. Mm-hmm. Some plastics. And I think I have – I think I kind of – I don't think Derek understood what I was getting at. He blew this off. Because in the comments when I was explaining about just showing it on camera and came back, people were like, is, is Travis serious about that? I was. So that's for another show for sure. Yeah. Is that something you'd throw more on the Chesapeake or would you throw that up from St. Lawrence? No, I'm talking stuff? smallmouth, dude. I'm talking really? smallmouth. Really? Wow. Yep. For sure. Wow. I know you're wrecking half a bait. Well, you actually get two baits for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> no, this ain't no joke. Like, guys, on, on the live stream right now, the 200-plus that are watching that, that's left here after three hours, um, here's your tip of the night. Just use your imagination. Um, we could talk for hours about this, but there you go, for real. Uh, I haven't talked about that yet. And I just thought that was a good time when we were talking about it. It is, yeah, absolutely. I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to take my scissors to it and show people. Um Damn, yeah. <laughs> the comments coming in. Yeah, we've had some all-time comments tonight. Crazy. All -time, so. Yeah, that's how the half shell started. Cool. St. Crest, who's the new rod sponsor? Let's talk about that. Um, it's a match made. It's a match made, dude. You guys know who I'm going with. Mad City Fishing's got it. You know, I love their spinning rods. I always have. And I use their, uh, the St. Croix uh, Tournament Bass Series, the blue rods, for years. And uh, I got away from them four or five, six years ago. And they're okay. starting to send me some rods now, some cranking rods. Super impressed. I, I can't be happier. Like I, like I said, guys, I've tried all the higher-end rods out there. I yeah. had to in my hands i had i i fish with dudes that fish those g loomises all day long there's something about a g loomis i don't want to say it i'm not going to say it you know what we can say it you can say whatever you want to it's after hours a g loomis angler reminds me of a liberal no i'm not i can't go there never <laughs> mind scratch that Oh, All man. I'm saying is if you're throwing the G Loomis, you should be more uh, – you need to be more aware of what's going on out there, okay? There's more to the story. And St. Croix's got it. I didn't well, see you that. went from pissing two people off in 2021 to probably about 15 real quick. We'll wait for the comments to come in. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there they are, Bo. I'm sorry, bro. 
Jay Kennedy says, clip that. No, honestly, <laughs> if you haven't thrown the St. Croix, the higher ends, you're, you're missing out. It is a, a truly special rod. It, it just seems, I, I get it, Brian, brand loyalty. You know, when I had the Dobbins rod, I was all about Dobbins. Know, people ask me, Dobbins, Dobbins, I didn't know any better, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the same way. Until you fish with a, a St. Croix Legend Elite, you know, extreme, you, and, and throwing your G Loomis, you got to throw it. Compare it. Compare the differences. Yeah. And get the differences. With this new partnership you got going with them, are you open to trying more lower budget rods and giving people an option that a Absolutely. good option that's not four hundred bucks a pop? A lot of people don't like dropping four hundred forty dollars on a rod. Uh, they sent me some Mojo Bass rods. Yeah, I use those, ones. dude. Like. I'll be honest, because I, I thought I was something special, you know, throwing those legend extremes, and this is my setup. I'm St. I'm St. Croix, and I'm Dobbins on the casting. Mm -hmm. I I held the mojos for the first time, and I was shocked. Wow! If they're they're right up there with my higher end Dobbins. I agree with you. I've made that same comparison with my own rods, and it makes me wonder why the heck am I spending two, three hundred dollars on a rod when this hundred, hundred fifty dollar rod feels the same. I that Mojo Bass line is all a, a person truly needs, uh, especially for moving baits. Yeah. Now, if you're going to get serious about a specific technique here and there, you know you want a you want a really good uh a uh, rod that you can feel the bottom so if you're if you're gonna get big into finesse fishing you want one good rod yeah. for finesse fishing you really that's where you should step it up and maybe spend the extra money mm -hmm. but if you're throwing any type of reaction bait that mojo series has you covered and uh yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm serious uh I'm, I'm really excited about that and we're gonna experiment with all the different rods and, and find out you know this is kind of the stage where i'm looking at all the different rods that they carry and try to match things up with what I used in the past as far as punching rods and flipping yeah. rods and frogging rods and Carolina rig rods. So it's a lot. It's a lot to go through because they have a lot of different rods in their whole arsenal. Yeah. You know, it's overwhelming, actually. It, it, it's overwhelming going on their website. But I think I'm going to get some things figured out with it, and uh, I'm definitely excited to to be able to use those next year. Heck yeah. Yep. Yep. How far are you into your prep for like chicken mob at James river? You just Google zero still Dude, zero. Wow. Everything has been, everything's been focused on these podcasts. Okay. Because I'm trying to get those done. And so my life has been consumed with interviewing people daily. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know why I decided to do this. But I think it's gonna be cool. Like well, you I, got I think too. You've got so many done already. You could probably last until September. I go till July. July right now. July, okay, yeah. So I mean But I don't want to be messing with podcasts yeah, I know what you're saying. when I'm fishing. So yeah, I need yeah. to get them done. You know, we might have a few stragglers out there. There's a couple key guys that timing's not right with them. Yep. You know, I gotta wait a little bit. To get them on, mm -hmm. but next week uh, I got Brandon Polnick coming on. Ryan said, uh, "I don't know. You know my schedule better than I do." But uh, <laughs> there's some there's some big big sticks coming up next week too. I'm waiting for an email from Andrew Ragas. I believe that's how you say his last name. He's all yep. in too, so we'll get him on. Johnson, yeah, we'll get him on next week. Um, yeah. One I thing I like that you're doing about it is it's not just the same pros over and over again shoving the berkeley max scent down your throat it's people that aren't sponsored so you know what they actually use what they're saying they're being honest and i'm not gonna lie i i had some uh i had some interesting comments from some high uppers some some pros out there yeah. that don't think it's a good idea to be sharing that much information i know the way i look at it i, is I launched one I launched the Joe Bay log was the first one. I'm already getting heat. <laughs> that dude said too much. What are you thinking? What are you doing? I don't know, dude. The way I looked at it is people like that. They're just, they can't be that confident in what they're doing because it's like, I think you're telling Riz, it's like you would get much more enjoyment out of putting this information out there 
and then going to the same spot and whooping their monkey ass and just proving that you're that much better than them, even though you have. Yeah, but to be honest with you, it is catching up with me. So, you know, the information that I do give out, I know other guys are using it. Yeah. Um, it, it makes you a better angler. It, it could just it just goes back to either you got it or you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Guys that guys that are struggling are going to use this information to help kind of improve their fishing a little bit. It's still about decisions over any of that yeah. stuff. It's all about mindset. That's what it really comes down to. Um, of course, smallmouth behavior and, and uh, conditions and, and 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 what's the case that that all plays into it. But I mean, it's a big factor, really, over yeah. bait and techniques. But I'm learning. There's a there's there hasn't really been a uh, an interview where I haven't like, wow and took some notes mm -hmm. so that's, that's crazy that's I'm good learning, stuff I'm right learning. yep yep one question i thought of for you was i've heard like there's pros i'm sure certain regional guys that are just absolute sticks on a body of water like i think greg de palma said one, i heard him say this one time he's got a spot on the chesapeake that he will never ever fish unless he's in an elite series tournament or a lot of money's on the line. Do you have spots like that on the Chesapeake or, or even St. Lawrence, Lake Ontario where spots that you're so confident you can go there and catch a 25 to 30 pound bag. You don't want to even bother touching them because every other Randy's going to see you doing it and come over there and ruin it. Do you have those secret spots or not? Um, on the Chesapeake? No. Okay. Because I do guide out there, and I, I, I have to put people on fish. Yep. Um, I'm curious what he's thinking about on the Chesapeake. That's spot <laughs> he never goes to. He said it on a bass. You, I think he said like, well, people talk a lot, dude. People talk a lot. Um. Yes, I do. I do have a spot on Lake Ontario that I've never filmed. Okay. And I was I won an ABA, and I was so lucky I didn't have a co angler that day with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a there's a spot or two. Do you think that that you would have the ability to have more spots if the smallmouth wasn't such a pelagic fish, or since they do tend to roam around more? Does that kind no, of that no? So cool? my my spots where those smallmouth roam, um, it's anyone's game. Okay. These secret spots are pretty predictable. Like smallmouth roam when you're fishing uh, areas that don't have the right structure to hold them. Okay. Do they roam until they find that structure? Uh, I think it's a little both. I think there's a lot of uh, resident fish. Yep. That stay on these spots, but the spots that normally win tournaments. Um, Man, I don't know. That game is so crazy. The smallmouth game. Absolutely. So for the open this year, are you gonna have? Are they letting you guys go to Ontario, or are you all stuck in the same? I would place? imagine. I think Canada is still gonna be closed. Yeah, I'm sure. We're pretty much screwed here as a country, uh, moving forward. And um, you know, I those those memes on Facebook, like with that dude that stormed the Capitol with that freaking. Uh, horn, bear, um, yeah. you know, when they say like six days into 2021, like who would have fucking thought that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like it's a crazy situation that's going on. Yeah. Um, the borders won't be open for sure. Uh, life as we know it is, we're going to be covering our masks. We're going to cover our face for a very, very long time. Okay. And so, yeah, we're not going to Canada next year. Uh, if we do great. I, I, there's no way, there's no way we're going to Canada. We'll, we'll be blocked out. Of it. Uh, it's, it makes <laughs> me want to fucking cry, dude. I want to move to like, I keep saying, I just, I want to live in a fucking cabin in Alaska, dude, but there's no good smallmouth in Alaska. Like I want to be left alone. I want to live off the land. I want to eat organic freaking lettuce out of my garden. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't grow lettuce in Alaska. Alaska. Shoot my elk. Okay. And fish. <laughs> And be left alone. I don't want to run into you at the Wawa. I don't want to talk to your sorry ass. Okay? <laughs> and that's not happening, dude. Like, I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go to hide that has good bass fishing. I should almost start. 
I love saltwater fishing. Maybe I need to do that, dude. Shit. Did you put that comment up? Yeah, I got because that one time we tested it, I got it just saved the administrator rights of my thing, so I can oh, do whatever. There you go. Nice, dude. I didn't know you had all these powers. Yeah, there's a um <laughs> Oh man, I don't know what to say. I'm honestly depressed about things, and I know I got I got to keep it real for everybody, so I yeah. can't get into it. But I'm just uh, here's here's where I'm at in my head. I I need to let go of everything. <laughs> That's funny you say that. Political and focus on myself. Focus on paying the least amount of taxes to the government because this shit ain't working. Uh, focus on, you know, just eating the right foods. Yep. Um, you know, you can't rely on, on, yeah, you got to make the right choices guys. And, and, uh, it's scary, dude. Like I, I'm uh, honestly, if you, I, I should be buying a new boat and I shouldn't be entering the, the opens in 2021 because of the uncertainty, like, I think that's a bad move. Do I feel like going down to the James River in Maine and spending four or five, six dollars a gallon on fuel, which I think is what's going to happen ultimately? Yeah. Um, that scares me. So I'm going to do it. Um, and if I get, if I get, you know, it, it, <sighs> maybe this might be my last. Hopefully, dude. Hopefully, I'm like, I'm not being as optimistic as I should be. But yeah, I hope it's not doom and gloom. Obviously, that's not what I want. But I feel that's where we're going to head to. And I hope I'm dead wrong. I s hope I'm dead wrong. I just, uh, like I said, I wish I could mm -hmm. move to an, a sovereign piece of land with big smallmouth and just enjoy my life, dude, because this, this political stuff is overtaking. Like, I can't deal with it. I want to almost get rid of Facebook. And, and just, yeah. but I can't. I can't because of what I'm doing here to promote what I do. I mean, I bet today, and I don't post political stuff anymore, but yeah, yeah, I see comments. I started writing three times to people, and then I deleted it. Oh, man. Here, I'll steer you in another direction here. Yes, off of it. So, like you said, with fish in the opens, there's a lot of uncertainty. Do you almost feel pressured to do it since there's two smallmouth fisheries? That, that's something you obviously specialize in and succeed have had success in the past. Do you almost feel pressured to do that whole series of the opens this year because you might not get another opportunity for the schedule to set up this well for you? No, I don't think the schedule sets up well at all because I got to deal with the James river, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is not my wheelhouse. I have to deal with Oneida Lake, which is a terrible fishery. Um, it is, let's be honest. And especially when you have 200 plus boats practicing. Yeah. Um, and with Canada being closed and the pressure that will be put on those fish on the U.S. side, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a challenge this year. So, no, I don't feel that. I, no. I don't have any pressure whatsoever. Yeah. I was, who, who was I talking to? I might have been talking on the last live or maybe not, but here's my concern. So, do I want to fish the Bassmaster Elite Series again? I don't have that drive like I did in 2006, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. I, I don't have that. I'm, I'm, I can't sleep at night because I want to qualify. I don't have that going on in my head right at all. The, the guy that's coming up in the ranks or, you know, the young guy or, or maybe someone who's older that just always want to be a professional angler. They probably can't sleep right now. thinking of that schedule. Yeah. They're doing like tons of homework and I don't have that drive at all. Do you think that, I mean, it's been a while since I don't you know what that means. I don't know. I can't, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's a good thing. I don't know if it's a bad thing. I don't know if it's a, if it's a good feeling to have, but the drive to be on the elite series is not there for me. And so that scares me a little bit because I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to qualify. But I don't have that drive to qualify. Okay. That fire is gone. You think that that fire might come back once you – I mean, it's been a while since you fished – I mean, I know you fished ABAs last year, but it's been a year plus since you fished the Costa big tournament. Do you think getting back into it might fire that back up or not? 
I mean, I'm going to take it serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to put my work in. I'm going to fish as hard as I can. I am going to do that, but the drive isn't there. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, yeah. I want to do well, Mm -hmm. but I don't have that. uh, I'm not waking up thinking about the Elite Series in the morning when I wake up. That's not my first thought anymore. Okay. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that qualify for the Elite Series. I'm hoping that didn't have that drive either. I'm just a little nervous about the guys that do have that drive. Okay. I see. And I compete well. against that mindset. And maybe I'm just more mellow as a – I'm not going to be mellow. That's not the word. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm just not – Maybe it's not in me anymore. Would you think that, I mean, obviously you're stepping up what you're doing with the channel this year. Got all kinds of crazy stuff going on in the world outside of this. Do you think that maybe you're just prioritizing other things over that, but that drive's still there. You're just not feeling it because right now you're preoccupied with getting 52 interviews done by January. You got all this crazy Facebook meme and all that stuff going around. Do you think that that's kind of preoccupying and taking that drive away? Could that be it? No. All right. No, dude, I wish I, I it's not. It's not it. Mm-hmm. Because I would feel it. I wanna here's the problem. What I'm what I'm really trying to say is I wanna feel that drive, dude. And I, I ain't got it. Yet. I don't have it. I'm begging for a reason to get that drive back in me. Damn. That's what I'm missing. I feel alive, dude. Honestly, when I'm drive, when I'm as much, I hate the place I live. I hate the Philadelphia area, the Northeast yeah. region. You know, ninety-five Wawas, chain stores, no nature, mm-hmm. concrete. Keep your boat outside in the elements. You know, homeowners association won't let you park your fucking boat in the driveway. You know, people with weird ass political signs next door. I hate this, dude. I hate yeah. this area. Indeed. And uh, as much as I hate it, when that alarm goes off at 4 a.m. and I got a guy trip on the Chesapeake and I make my coffee and I get my truck, I, I feel it again for a little bit, even though I'm on 95. And uh, and being able to get out and go fishing, even though I'm not really fishing, I'm just helping people catch fish. Yeah. I do like that. Um, so that – you know, that keeps me going. This, this, if I, if I had a corporate job right now, dude, I, you know what I mean? At least I get to talk fishing a little bit. I know, I know I'm not as, as involved as Eric is in detail about different baits and how you have to have a special dot on this crankbait or it's Mm -hmm. not catch a fish. You know, I'm simple as fuck when it comes to that stuff. And that's my passion. You know, Oliver's a great big bait specialist. You know what I mean? But I don't have that drive. You know, I just, I don't have it. I like catching fish. And I feel like I can catch them on, on what I do, how I do it now. And I enjoy it. So I don't, I don't see a way to change. And, and, uh, you know, that's a terrible thing as someone who has influence in the industry to, you know, sell product and whatnot that's not the right guy for the job you know i'm really not because i'm so simple i'm simple on colors i'm simple on techniques um but i am driven when i say i don't have that drive to compete on the elite series like i still want to go win that tournament and and win a team event and Mm -hmm. do the bfl and aba I still get excited for that. Uh, I just that uh, I don't know what I'm missing. I don't know what I'm missing here, and maybe I'm not missing anything. Maybe this is just the stage in your life, you know? Yeah, I think this is crazy. I feel like I'm, I'm so I've been interviewing people for so long here in the last month. It's been a crazy, crazy time. I think. I mean, what was it last? Friday, Saturday, we had that auction live in Riz and Brian were on before. And you got so fired up just talking to Riz about BFL strategy and helping him compete. 
I'll be going to bed. Once you get back in the swing of things, you get all these interviews done. You get ready back catching fish every day. I think you'll have a lot more fire and drive to go out there and whip some ass in these tournaments. Yeah, but I do know what I have up against me here. But I mean, uh, once I get these interviews done, I do need to do some serious hardcore um, studying for these events. My first one is going to be the ABA in, in, in April. Uh, I, I got to do some homework. Um, and then I do have to start doing homework for the James. Oneida, the only homework I'm going to do is early spring, and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to put some time in. Mm -hmm. uh, You're going to listen to the Gray Buck episode of the Small yeah. Mouth Fresh podcast about 10 times. There's a reason for that. And then I'm going to – I literally have uh, guide trips up until four days prior to Oneida by choice. I okay. could have easily taken a week and a half off. Yeah. I, I I fished all night enough to know maybe I'm being stupid or foolish. Um, but I only gonna have a handful of days of practice for that one. Um only because I I know people and it goes against the grain, you know, they say yeah, fish the moment or don't be stuck in your head. That's for people that are a little confused about where they're at when it comes to fishing in their game. Yeah. It is. That advice is for people, and there's a lot of you, and there's nothing wrong with that because you can't expect everyone to be at that level. But And watch me take 180th on Oneida, by the way, in July. But I feel like I'm confident in what I'm going to do already, and I, I – I'm not going to let the fish tell me what to do. I'm okay. going to do what I do, which what I know works. That sounds like a recipe, like you said, to either finish 180th or in the top three. Yeah, well, I'll be happy with a 20th out of there with, with all that pressure. So is that kind of a mindset you keep going into all three of these events? Are you trying to fish for points? Are you trying to win at all three of them? Are you just trying to see where you're at and the at that level of competition? Well, I don't have the drive, but my, my I want to be in the top two in points and make, make the elites. The top, yeah. Top three or, two or, two or four, I don't know. They change it, dude. <laughs> they give out codes right now. If you're on the FLW tour and you want to fish the Opens, you get to secretly sign up a week earlier. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Plus, yeah, you know what? You yeah. know what? You know what's gonna probably happen? <laughs> those uh, those favorites that they give the codes out to, they might have that thumb on the scale, not literally, but the guy in the back with the glasses behind the curtain. Yep, yep. Come way in time. I think that you could do a whole after hours episode about that. Cause I remember one time you mentioned to Eric there's some elite series conspiracies about extra weight getting thrown in there every once in a while for the there's always conspiracies dude i don't know what to think anymore i'm just gonna do what i do dude i love it i i'm excited listen uh here's the problem like my main focus here's probably why honestly i, I know i just answered my head real quick i'm like that go. the reason why i'm not fired up is because i'm planning to make a big move you know um upstate new york at some yeah. point and I'm more concerned about my man cave and uh, getting that right than anything. Like, that's my main focus right now. I wake up thinking, damn, like, uh, I'm talking to the, to the, dude, it's going to be epic. Like, I can't even explain it, dude. Like, I'm going to have a fish cleaning station in there. Like, you don't even know. I already know the color of the cabinets and the, and the shelves and where all the, the rods are going to be lined up on the, on the, on the wall and the, the washer and dryer separate next to the bat. This is in the man cave, bro. You have a washer and dryer just for your man cave. Yes. <laughs> Dude, it's going to be sick. So I'm honestly focused on that. Well, there you I'm go. Use that. If you win one of those opens, you get in the classic, then you have all this money for your man cave. There you go. Yeah, but what happens is if I make the elites, dude, uh, that dream set on that, 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 I can't have both. Maybe I can. It's hard, dude. It takes a lot of time to custom build. You know, I'm, I'm going to build up there. I'm not going to buy. Yeah. So it's picking out the land. It's it's the whole, you know, what kind of heat do I want in that 
in my property and uh yeah all right things. the studio is going to be amazing i made this little garage here that you came and put a, a honda civic in this is a room now the house okay yeah. i'm in the garage which is an epic garage it's the best i get i live in a uh they're called row houses whatever you call them here on the east coast it's it's the same thing next door right yeah, uh, yeah. stupid for what i'm paying here i could could definitely live on a lake in upstate new york okay and people don't even know they think this is normal this ain't normal i want to carry I, I don't want my neighbor being nice and taking my garbage up for me i want to take it up okay i got it you don't want any neighbors i got it <laughs> all right i don't want a neighbor next to me i want to be able to shoot a fucking deer out my back window or there a turkey that oh, the season because i'm a sovereign citizen and if i want meat for my family i'm gonna get it but uh oh my god all right if i want to shoot a turkey i'm gonna shoot a turkey to feed my family there you go uh, that's what i'm looking for dude and and so I, I really have that on my mind because i do want to have a really cool studio where i can do some filming when i get up to new york i plan on expanding my guide service to all species so i want to target walleye i want to target brown trout uh salmon everything you know i want to do the early spring I want to get people on on. I just want to go out fishing with people and, and mm -hmm. share the uh, experience with everyone, uh, and and you know that's what kind of fires me up. And there's a lot of opportunity. I'll, I'll be ice fishing. I'll be doing the the salmon trips, you know, down the rivers and and whatnot in the fall. So there's a lot going on that I'm excited for, and I want to get back into hunting. Man, I I lost that since I moved out here. I haven't duck hunted at all and yes yeah. that was what i did back in the day man that that was what i was known for like if you're gonna ask me in 2002 like i was a duck hunter man you know yeah i, I want to back into that i want to be able to enjoy that stuff um <laughs> shady goes i'm just kind of catching up on the comments i hope I, I hope i'm not scaring people guys <laughs> i hope i'm just being real right now i'm really that's having a real like. that's what they're here for I hope, so, dude, I, I hope i'm not like scaring people away but no, no. i don't know dude that's i i want a fucking garden man you know what i mean i want to go to i'm sick of going to whole foods and paying three times more for an organic piece of fucking celery you know when i can go to giant and spend two dollars but now i'm spending four because of all the poison and shit that they dump on this stuff <laughs> just for population control in the future but uh <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh I just want that lifestyle, dude, where I'm just free. Ooh. I just want to be free. Heck yeah. I feel I away from all this stuff, dude. One question I thought of going back to your guide service a little bit. So obviously I haven't really talked to you too much about your guide service. So obviously the whole point of the guide service is take people out to catch fish, right? So if someone just kind of wanted like a an instructional style trip, so they just say, Hey Travis. Take me out on Lake Ontario. Teach me how to find and catch these fish as if I were doing it on my own. Is that something you're into or do you just like to drive them to the hole and say cast here and reel it in? No, I get a lot of guys that want that experience. And that's what's the that's the real experience, you know? Yeah. Um, people always ask me, you know, man, you should be able to crush them in that tournament you've been guiding for months there. That's not the case. I can't – a lot of times I can't find fish uh, because I'm with clients that maybe not experienced yeah. They're expecting an epic smallmouth battle, so we got to go to where the fish are. Um, when when a guy says, "Man, show walk me through your mindset," that's the trips I love, and they learn a lot. Yeah, you know? uh, they learn a lot both ways. But when I when I have a freestyle day and I can just go, you know, this guy doesn't care about fish catches, and we just go explore. Or I I I walk him through because, dude, like. You know, it's crazy. I don't, I'm not the, I fight every day for what I have out there, you know? Yeah. There ain't, I don't know. Maybe there's, maybe the Johnston brothers can do it, but I can't do it. I, I got to fight for those fish. I'm not dialed in. Like maybe I lead to be on, on, you know, on YouTube and stuff like that. Like I got to work for those bites. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy for me even. And I have the I have the experience, but a guy from Arkansas can come up to Ontario and kick my ass any given day. You wow. know, they can. It's like that. So 
there's a lot that goes into it. You know, I just try to enjoy what, what I do and, and, uh, I don't think I'll ever learn everything at all. Wow. That's crazy to think. I mean, it's because I know it's just these interviews with these podcasters, these top smallmouth guys in the country, like shit, I can't compete against these guys. I can't Scott Dobson would kick my monkey ass every day. You know, like it's, it's crazy. These guys. And that's one thing that bothers me a lot is I, I don't, I don't have a big win on the opens, you know? Okay. I don't have that at all. Um, and, uh, it's, you gotta think though, what does that matter? There's not a small mouth down there at the bottom. No, of the dude, you, need a win. you need a win or two. You need a couple big wins, man, to be the guy. I think. So do you kind of feel like your YouTube reputation reputation kind of precedes your tournament reputation and people are expecting you to be the big the small mouth guy, but you don't so, feel that way because you haven't had that big win yet? I think, yes. I think the people that start YouTube channels right now and want to do what I'm doing, they don't have that. And listen, my, you know, I got a couple co stupid top tens here and there, you know what I mean? But that is what people look at. So, yeah, I mean, I think you, you have to have the credentials somewhat in their minds. It's not, it's shit to me. I okay. want that win. But, you know, a couple of red trophies here and there, more than one, you know, a handful yeah. gets people's attention. Um, and I think that's what a lot of these newcomers are missing is you, you got to you got to be consistent and be able to you got to prove yourself somewhat. To be able to absolutely to have that credibility to, to take off. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what happened with me. You know, when I moved here, when the, you guys heard my elite series story, you know, I didn't belong there. I had no clue what I was doing. And after, I still love fishing, but I had a lot to learn. And when I moved out here, I had the experience to fish different bodies of water, tidal water, and then, of course, Lake Ontario and the Great Lakes. And so I was able to get a lot more experience in and, and finally start doing well in tournaments to where I could launch a, uh, a YouTube type setting where, where yeah. I have now. It's getting harder because content wise, you know, all like, I mean, I get down and out looking at Brandon Polnick's videos. He does an amazing job, but I don't have the money to support a camera guy. Yeah. Um, you know, Oliver, who was on tonight, his camera guy was right there. I don't have that luxury to be able to, I mean, what do you have to make to be a camera? You got to make 50 grand, at least 40 grand a year now, yeah, right? You to year round. <laughs> if you're doing the job in your twenties, you got to be making 40 grand plus to survive. Mm -hmm. I don't have that money to give a camera guy to follow me around. You know, the Scott Martins and, 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 and those guys, um, that's what kind of, it makes, I don't know. But I mean, it, I remember, it, yes. yeah, so when I, I think the first time you called me, we were kind of talking about that and I was kind of saying, well, you got away with what your audience wants too. I don't think a lot of people are tuning in here to see those great, I mean, they're not going to not like it, but they're already, you already have people watching, you have a good audience. I think you should worry more about growing that fan base and getting those trophies like you're saying. And then, once you get that financial backing that you need, that's when you get the camera guy. That's when you get the fancy drone shots. And then you're already going to have that base of people that grew your platform that were with you all the way there. I think that's at the point where you say, is it even worth the money? Is it worth my investment for this cool camera work when I already have all these people that are liking what I'm putting out right yeah, now? Maybe it's a tricky deal because, um, you know, let's say you do have a camera guy. So you got to pay him thir minimum. I don't know. 40,000 a year. Yeah. Okay. Right. You got to be making 80 then off your YouTube channel. Yeah. At least. And that, that usually takes like 30% of it. Yeah. So I don't know how they do it, man. I, I don't know. Maybe they're they're killing it. Not, I don't know. Well, maybe even harder than the money, too, is finding the right guy. There's probably not too many people that want to drive all around the country and sleep in a little camper to film you catching a fish every once in a while. Maybe yeah. the hardest part about it. 
I tell you what, the 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 best videos I make are are the ones that are I'm just out freestyling. Yeah. And I don't have to talk about a specific bait, and I can just go fish. But that's not what everyone wants. So I, I I'm trying to mm -hmm. accommodate everyone. You know, my tournament videos are easiest to make because I just press play and hit save when I. Yeah. You know, uh, I I do miss that because when I was fishing the opens two years ago, three and four years ago, uh, those are some of the funnest times of my life because. I was like eager and, and ready and just having fun out there and practice and doing well and making good content. And then with some of the changes, you know, my, my decision to boycott BFL in 2020 yeah. was really, uh, it was just a weird year for me. It was, it was great because I had the opportunity to guide more. And I thought 2020 was going to be the year I could explore Lake Ontario even more and learn. Yeah. And uh, I just ended up having more guide trips, and I didn't learn a whole lot. I was putting people on shit I already knew, you know? Yeah. I didn't learn a whole lot last year. Canada being shut down really hurt that, too. You could add a whole. And I'm thinking this year is going to be different, but it's not because I'm going to be in competition again, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd love to have a year to myself on Lake Ontario where I could just go out there and just learn it. You know, that would be nice. Absolutely. It'd be awesome. So let's you get, little, you get little pieces of puzzle together every time you guide, but you don't get the full story. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. So let's say we're sitting here. It's December 28th, 2021. When you look back on this year, what do you want to happen for you to deem 2021 as a successful year for not only your angling career, but the channel as well? What do you, Damn, that's, a, that's a hell of a question, dude. Um, obviously I'd like to, I'd like to uh, qualify for the Elite Series. Okay. I don't know if I can get a win. Top 10s, you know what I mean? Uh, in 50,000. I want to grow this channel to 50,000. I got 20,000 to go. I'd be happy with that. More than halfway there. Right. I think, I mean... Once this content is consistently every week, you got the pod, 52 podcasts, 52 live shows. I think it's going to work out pretty well. Well, 50, 50 or 51 live shows. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not going to. There's a week in March I'm going to have to skip. I already talked to Eric about it. But, yeah, we're going to try to be as consistent as possible. Yeah. Stuff will come up. We can't be perfect all the time. But hey, Listen, if I don't qualify for the least, I mean, listen – I'm gonna keep doing it. If I if I take a 180 on the James, which could easily happen, okay, um, I'm gonna suck it up and I just don't want to fall into that category, dude. Like since I've been on last four or five years, I don't I don't do that bad in tournaments, and that's the scary part. Like I don't know if I can keep that streak going. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, um, we kind of talked about this on after one of the last lives. You were talking about you had that little fear of. If you do bad in a tournament hour, all these people are going to be like, where the hell am I watching his YouTube channel? He can't catch fish. Yeah, I think it's more on, on myself than than the viewers. Um, yeah. Because shit happens, but I don't want to be that. I, I'm not. I've always said this. I'm not into the dude on tour that fished on the FLW tour for three, four years and has never done shit. And yeah. then wins one, and all of a sudden he's a big deal. That's not who I want to be. Mm-hmm. I want to be that consistent yeah. dude. Like I, I don't want to win and then suck for three years afterwards, mm -hmm. or three years before get yeah. a win and then do that mediocre. That's not my vision for me. Um, and I don't know how long you can be at the top. Yeah, yeah. One um, thing that makes it hard about the opens that you're fishing too is. In any pro circuit, if you finish in the top 10, top 15 of the points, you would consider that to be a great year. But in the Opens, that does nothing for you. You just get a, cool, you got 10th place, see you next year. Yeah. You really got to be on yeah. top of it, have things go your way. It's tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not going to um, – you're not going to make any money fishing the elites. The goal is to qualify for the Classic. You know, of course you win. There's three yeah. events in the Northern Opens. There's 200 plus boats. That means three people 
out of 200 is yeah. those odds aren't the great yeah. like if you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm. so are you kind of just going into the james with the mindset of let's get out of here with a top 60 finish survive get up to oneida whatever the second one is and get to work uh top 40 cash check get out of there I need to get a check there. On the body water, you the you pair of fishing on the James as there is the Delaware tidal bodies around you. Can you fish there? Get some, you know, just get kind of used to the tidal swing, get back in the yeah. fall stuff. Would that help you out at all or not? I'm hoping that's going to be a late spawn on the James. Okay. And I can, uh, I can deal with doing what I do mm-hmm. in those situations. Uh, if it's uh if the spawn's finished, it's gonna be anyone's game. So obviously, I mean, when Ike won there a couple years ago, his main pattern that I remember him saying was he'd chase the tide. He'd look at the tidal charts and he'd go after the tide. So he was consistently fishing a low tide more every day. Is that something? I'm not real. I'm not familiar at all with tidal fishing. Is that something that? no one really does and he was just that special that figured that out or is that something that everyone does and why you're chasing the tide you still have to uh, chasing stuff. tides is a is a game plan for a lot of people uh it's a good game plan for a lot of people okay. uh it doesn't fit into my style of fishing so when go. i got i don't chase tides i i fish i have to fish regardless of the conditions so uh, i learned to adapt to that and i feel more comfortable doing what I do in those situations. So no, I'm not chasing tides, uh, especially on a new body of water, like the James, I don't have places to go. I'm going to have six, five, six days of practice there. Yeah. How do you, how do you chase a tide? I don't have spots. You know what yeah. I mean? The guys that have spots. Yeah. They're going to chase tides. I can't chase a tide with zero experience. Where, where am I going to chase it to? Mm-hmm. Is that a um, – so I think something you mentioned there that not a lot of people really think of is staying inside of your style. So, like, for example, let's see, let me think of a good fisher here. So, like, Hank Cherry used this example earlier this year. He's talked about how the elites go up to St. Lawrence every year, and he tries to go out there and drift around with all the live scope guys and catch these big small mouth. And it just doesn't work for him. It's against his style of fishing. So even though that might be the winning pattern, it's against his style. Do you think that staying true to your style of fishing provides more consistent results because you're confident in what you're doing? You know, you're going to go out there and get what you get. It might not be the winning pattern, but it's going to be the pattern that keeps you consistent and gets you a check and gets you on the road to the next one. Yeah, that that has been my, that you, you hit it right on the head. I can't explain it better. That, that's my style. That's how I do it. I fish my strengths and what I'm comfortable with. Um, that's my secret. To, I mean, that was the big debate when I, we had Ryan Salzman on. We talked about how we fish tournaments. Yeah. His theory was always, you know, uh, whatever it was, shoot for defenses, attitude, go win it, everyone. Yeah. I can't get behind that. I can't get behind that because you're, 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 when you have that chance to win a, an event, I don't care what it is, a team event or a little BFL or whatever, man, it's hard to win these tournaments. So yeah. when it's right, it's right for you. Um, again, it all comes back to me is consistent. That's what I'm looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, tough questions, Alex. You're bringing the heat tonight. Got to keep the, what do we got? 150 still going strong with us. 150, man. This has been a good, a good show. Has been. Somebody check on Eric. I want to make sure he's okay. Man, I'll be interested to see what he pulls out of Maryland. That sounds like he's gonna have a good trip up there this. Yeah. yeah. Spring. He will. He will. So man, next man. week we have. Uh, we have Ryan Salzman coming on talking A rigs. Hopefully, there's no fights that are going to break out. Yes. Um, Stay for after hours. Yeah, it'll be good. I'm looking forward to that one. We got uh, Jeff Gustaf- uh, Gussie coming on Sunday on the podcast. We're going to put a random. Uh oh, what happened? We're going to put a random video up 
on Wednesday. And um, that pretty much does the week for us. So you got Gus to send on the podcast. That'll be Sunday. What time Sunday are you thinking? Uh, I have it listed on, on the podcast platform at 4 o'clock. Okay. So we'll so get on the podcast platform at like 5 o'clock. Basically. Yeah, if you guys want to watch on the podcast, you know, obviously I'm doing this on YouTube as well. But the podcast, we found out that you got to subscribe to yes. my podcast to really get the updates quickly. Apple could take up to 24 hours to put that stupid thing out if you're not subscribed. Which kind of threw me for a loop on my first. Launch. Yeah, it's yep. such a weird. One thing, guys, I'll mention this to you. If anyone, I've had a lot of people tell me they had trouble finding it on iTunes. Travis spells smallmouth crush all in one word. It, on iTunes, if you put a space in between there, it does not show up at all. Huh. I don't know what how that happens, how their search system works, but it just will not pop up. So make sure if you can't find it on iTunes, just make it all one word and it'll pop right up there. Yeah. And then also while you're there, just subscribe. You never have to worry about it again. Leave a review. You can go. There you go. Mm -hmm. oh, well, perfect. I got to go through these comments, man. They're they're interesting. They're trying to make you think Eric's on Bateman's stream. I'm trying to get you. What happened? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> ah, it's all good. All right, buddy. Good job tonight. Good show, Thank everybody. You. Thanks for hanging out with us. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It was a good one. Man. This was an epic live. It was. One it really was ones. when you think about it. It was. There was, I mean, you had a variety of guests on. We got into a little therapy session there at the end. I mean, it was just a great all around, great comments. We got the name for your jig. And now I don't know. So I have a name. I, I, I don't think I'm going to say it yet, but okay. uh, I do like the Mothman. I do. That was good. I like it. I that like was it. good. Well, thanks for hanging out with it, guys. We'll uh, look forward to the uh, the podcast here on Sunday night. It will be the next time uh, you'll see my videos around. And then definitely next week, Thursday, for the live stream. I appreciate the support. If you if you do buy Tackle from the, the Real Shot, use that link, please, in this description. It does help out immensely. And, of course, Beast Coast, man. Derek was great tonight. Yeah, so. awesome, man. As you were, too. So we'll leave it on that note. Eric, hopefully. Uh, hopefully that was great, too. We can talk about that. That, that might have been the highlight of the show. <laughs> Big time, Jimmy. You're, you're sleeping right now, but I hope there's no hard feelings. I just wanted an excuse, man. <laughs> That's all I'm asking for. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water. See you.